Hey, that was a good song. That was another blind select. Welcome. Happy Friday. TGIF. If you're expecting Boy Meets World, well, I got something better for you. Celery Man Meets Prison. No, I wish. Um, remember that TGIF back in the day? Any 90s children out there? 90s babies, as they say? Remember that was like TGIF. Boy Meets World and Providence on ABC, <laughs> whatever. Maybe dating myself here, but um, yeah, that's what I remember. Uh, welcome. So I, as promised, uh, look at me. Look at me. I got like a little cute outfit on. My God, romper. Oh, finally for not once, not in a uh, t-shirt that has been in my drawer for 10 years. Wow, progress. As my therapist would say, that is progress, baby. We're making progress. A. Take one step forward and two steps back. Sue me. Uh, as promised, at the end of the stream last night, if you were here, welcome back. If you weren't, no worries, didn't miss a whole lot. Um, we started listening to the medical medium podcast where he specifically by name and plays her voice memos uh, is calling out uh, the woman who died um, after being diagnosed with uh, stage four breast cancer and basically following medical medium advice or believing that Anthony was going to save her by his magical powers. Um, the article did not make him look super great. It was in Vanity Fair. We talked about it in a couple streams ago. I read the whole article basically. And uh, since then, Anthony, AKA AW, AKA the medical medium has posted like three podcasts. And again, we can talk about the timing of all this. Three podcasts uh, called... <laughs> Episode one, the plot to take down the medical medium, which was, how long was this one? Let's A see. That one was 48 minutes total. Okay. Then episode two, I can bring you along with this. You can see. So I'm not lying to you. My spirit's telling you this information actually in my ear. Uh, the second one was 58 minutes. Okay. So if you didn't get enough info about the plot in episode one, she gave us nothing. Episode two has uh, 58 minutes of information. Then we got episode three. Can't forget episode three. This one has 54 minutes. So he's still not tr quite getting his point across yet. Then he did a hour and 45 minutes now, an hour and 40 minute podcast, and this one I think is the worst one, uh, for Steph, the untold story, where basically Steph is the woman who passed away. She was uh, had a pretty seemingly aggressive form of breast cancer. She was texting him, calling him, asking for help. Uh, he did tell her to go to a doctor, uh, but it seems like she was going to chiropractors. She was, you know, getting advice from other natural healers and his argument in the first half of this that we listened to last night more than the half we listened to last night um was that well she ate grapes and that's not medical medium <laughs> that's not my advice my advice is celery and she ate grapes so therefore if she ate celery more she would be alive is sort of the vibe uh that i got and he is defending himself at every turn also he's doing this podcast with one of his other very staunch followers. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's really sad, the whole thing. Welcome, LS. Uh, so I promised that I was kind of getting annoyed at it. Uh, also, we had done the whole stream about <laughs> another murder case. Uh, so it's getting a little heavy around here <laughs> and I was tired and I was hungry. So I was like, all right, let's finish this tomorrow. So we'll finish it. Then we can go back maybe to the other episodes. Um, and it's Friday night. So, you know, I know you guys got plans. <laughs> Do I have plans tonight? Not really. I basically have this and um, doing a little work and watching The Curse of Oak Island for the millionth time again. Uh, so I, I'm here for it. Um, and it, let me see. I want to pull up the woman he's talking to. I forget her name. We looked her up the first time. Uh, does, he not, does he not name her? It's like, I guess it's on his Instagram. Oh, he blocked me on Instagram. I forgot about that. He basically um, has this woman who's on and uh, is is kind of speaking for him a lot of the times in this podcast, which is very annoying because 
she's delivering the information about what he should be saying. And it makes me feel again, like he's a cult leader. And this person who's speaking a lot on this podcast is just cult follower number one. We talked about the plotters. The plotters are the people who are against medical medium. And if you're a follower, you're cult follower number one. This spells cult, C-U-L-T. So everyone, um, get your celery juice ready. Got my celery juice right here. Okay, and uh, and get, and get ready to go. I'm sorry if these are really loud. Someone mentioned yesterday that these sound bites are loud AF. And also, when I watched back a little bit of the stream, I saw that the video when we were going through the mansion of the of uh, Corey Richens, the uh, author slash potential murderer, uh, it was so loud, and I apologize. That did not sound the same in my headphones. So, <laughs> my bad. I'm gonna have to actually drink a little celery juice. Keep me going here. Okay, there you go. All right, so we left off at minute 46, I think. So let's go back 30 seconds. See, uh, wait, oh no, this is the wrong one. We, we ended up 46, yeah. Which reinforces. Okay, so let's go back 30 seconds. Actually, we'll go back a whole minute so we can recap a little bit, get back to our bearings and then play it. Okay, so I lied. So, so we are 40 minutes, 45 minutes in. We have an hour left. So I don't know what possibly more they could say, but that's what we're here for. And I'll pull up, um, I'll pull up the person who he's speaking to's information uh, in the meantime. Okay. All right. And play. TV. Um, uh, that's what his recommendation. So what I want to point out here is that Stephanie's doctor, Dr is recommending that she get an MRI and that she takes an anti-inflammatory. Dr. also prescribed, quote, icing the hell out of it without any parameters or direction, which led to Stephanie being on the floor. Okay, oh, this is the worst part. So um, she's talking about right now, this is, okay, again, let me just show her. This is me unsigned into Instagram. So there you go. Uh, do you have acne? Yes, I do have acne, if you couldn't tell. Um, can't see I can't see all of his stuff lame show more posts there you go um he did like a whole video about like the takedown no don't follow me there guys <laughs> I don't use it okay well I guess we will never know because he blocked me and I can't oh wait I got it so, sorry, everybody. Stand by. See more. See more. <sighs> okay, never mind. You're making this difficult, Anthony. So just imagine one of his followers, who's like a uh, medical medium fan, is the one speaking. I can't. I cannot provide you the photographic evidence, as I thought I could. Okay, there. The nice, constantly going into the shivers and the shakes. Stephanie voices her concern of how she is going to get off the floor and get out to do an MRI. Next, we will hear an audio text from Anthony. And I think your, uh, your other chiropractor needs to order an MRI or order something, and if he had the two, or, or help you give you more direction on that too. Yeah, again, a lot of people pointed this out yesterday, that chiropractors are not medical doctors. They do not go to medical school. So the fact that they can do MRIs, I guess, maybe, or they can order one for you, but they are not going to be you know, treating your cancers. They are a totally different field. And a lot of times... Honestly, and I, you know, hate to say it because I know some people really believe in chiropractic care. A lot of people who are wrapped up in woo-woo spirituality and not fact-based medicine, evidence-based anything are chiropractors. And they will definitely stay out of their own lane and veer into traffic and try to diagnose people with, you know, inflammatory disorders and mental health problems and blah, 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 blah. They go way over the scope because they believe the spine controls everything else and it's like okay well why don't you become a spinal surgeon then i don't know <laughs> anyways what you just heard was a w supporting the mri that the doctor prescribed which reinforces what a w originally told stephanie since the beginning of her back injury which was to call her doctor and get an mri next stephanie got a second opinion from another doctor and this doctor also recommended an mri and to go to the hospital i just got off the phone with that went well she wants me to get an MRI and um, get by the DO to do like cranial sacral work 
and uh, yeah, the MRI showed to get a better look at the disc and see what's going on. Stephanie did not go, and Stephanie's family, her friends, did not take her to the emergency room or to urgent care or call 911 for emergency services to take her to the hospital, even though two doctors recommended for her to go to urgent care and also to get an MRI. This next recording is Stephanie saying she is stuck on the floor because Ugh. of her back problem. I almost want to skip this part, but this is like the part that I started getting like uh, sick over, really. I don't know. Uh, okay, we'll play it again, but trigger warning, it is pretty horrible and I was actually shocked to hear it because this is again a woman who has now passed away because of a cancer that she allowed to fester because she was believing that all these spiritual healers were in control and telling her the right information and you know she could fight it with these natural uh, remedies and fasts and things including getting the advice of Anthony William um and it's sad. It's sad how bad it had gotten and how desperate she is for help and how everyone in her life that is in this world let her down, seemingly. So I'll play it because it's true life. It's real life, but it's hard to hear. My only thing now is, oh my God, like how am I going to physically get out? <sighs> Can we hear that again? My only thing now is, oh my God, like how am I going to physically get out? At this point, Stephanie is saying she got stuck on the floor and couldn't get up. Clearly, A.W. was the one who was telling her to go to the doctor, etc. He did not tell her to lie flat on the floor. She got stuck on the floor because of her back issues. A.W. responded with, Well, you know, you might, not be, you might not be able to leave the house for a little while. You know, might not be happening. And if it's, you know, so, 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 so bad, then, you know, might have to get a stretcher in there and take you to the hospital for an MRI. But yeah, getting you good enough to get an MRI, I'm totally on board with that. I didn't want Steph to think that she was out of options. So I reminded her she could even call emergency and get a stretcher in there to take her to the hospital. Stephanie ends up tragically getting stuck on the floor for a long time. The plotters have tried to say that Stephanie was on the floor for so long because a W told her to lie flat on the floor and to lie incredibly still when that's far from the truth. The number one plotters blog post from 2020 states, quote, in the spring of 2017, her back began to ache. We talked a little bit during her back injury. She told me Anthony said it was a yoga injury. I really don't remember hurting it in yoga, she said. But Anthony was clear. He advised her to lay incredibly still. Here is evidence of other plotters perpetuating the same falsity. Bottom line was, he told her she needed to lay, lay flat and not move. He'd been through this before, it would deal. She spent eight months thinking that all she had to do was just lay around and it would heal. So with the lump, did she, and even with, with the... Okay, I think actually maybe we already did skip that uh, incredibly hard to hear part. So maybe that's for the best. Disc or whatever that was, did she ever see a doctor? Well, we're, I'm getting to that. Okay. The answer, no. the answer is no, because Anthony told her she needed to lay flat. The answer and is would, no, because she trusted Anthony she, along the way. Like, yeah, 100%. Like, In reality, again... Stephanie was stuck on the floor because of her back issues. Hey, bro, this is really bad. I'm in a really bad position here. I don't know what's going on with my back, but it got like a thousand times worse. <laughs> this morning when I tried to get out of bed just to pee early in the morning at four. Oh, it was here it is. incredibly hard. And before my dad left for work, I said, can you just be here while I tried to pee one more time? And he was standing beside me and I just, everything was spasming and screaming and I had to fall over onto the bed and I got stuck and it was, I was literally screaming, like, it, like blood curdling, like shocking things because it wasn't calming down even once I laid. And it's just so bad. I had to fidget my way onto the floor. I just don't know what to do. And I'm really scared. Mm. And the fear of the pain getting, you know, intense. That's why I've stayed so still. So you're stuck on the floor right now? Is that what it is? Yeah, I'm still stuck on the floor, but now I'm not laying flat like I was since 5.30 this morning. I'm on this really weird angle. I, I pushed all these blankets and pillows towards my bed to like for leverage to get me up and step by step, but it's just not happening. Um, and then I would put heat on if it, if it spasmed out, but I'm just so afraid to get up. It's, uh, I can't push through it either because then it'll just go crazy and I'll 
scream and I'll probably fall back down. So it's really hard to explain. And, you know, everyone keeps saying, oh, well, let me, my dad, my dad and I have had Taylor on the phone and they're both like, well, can't he just pull you up? No, it's like, I feel like I can't explain it. Like I have to be the one in charge of the leverage and each step. And I don't know how to do it otherwise. And I, and I have to go to the bathroom. So I don't know what, what's happening here. And the fact, again, like, and someone mentioned it, and I agree, like the titles, like for Steph, the untold story, all he's doing is saying she had financial problems and I hired her to help her, but like, I, it wasn't because of her skills or that she was a good person. I hired her to help her with her financial issues. And um, she didn't actually follow me and my work as closely as they made it seem. She is not a true follower of mine because I would have said no lemon in your celery juice. And also everything that I told her, she didn't listen to. So anything that happened to her is really her fault and it's not my fault. And there's really no reason why anyone would ever think I did anything wrong. Yeah, what a wonderful thing for her and for her legacy, you know? Like, well, that's good. I'm glad we cleared it up that she's a total horrible person, that she did everything wrong. It's like, okay, this is sad. And yeah, this is gonna be bed tonight, I think. Just the floor next to the bed. I, I can't do it. I gotta just stay down here. Um, I don't know, yeah, because of where I need to stay. Well, is your is your heart on your back to be on the floor? Is it killing your back to be on the floor? Are you okay? You know, do you uh, have enough blankets? Are you gonna be able to do it? Uh, I just feel terrible for you, kiddo. If you gotta be on the floor. I believe that, and I don't know for sure, but these all could be doctored. I have no clue. We're just trusting a random woman and this man who obviously lies all the time um, that these are really the voice memos they shared back and forth. But I mean, if anything, maybe hers could be real and her, his could be recorded now because he's still alive and she's not. And I have no idea what her voice sounds like. So I don't know. I, I tend to believe it's true, I guess. But like, because I guess like if it was me and I was like, well, let me make myself look better if like medical medium was whatever you know he could be like record himself and saying go to a doctor right now there is no alternative i am not a clinical or a chiropractor or a naturopathic doctor i you know this is not medical advice like he could really jazz it up to be lawyer speak and so that's why i tend to believe it's real but it could of course be fake Oh, I'm trying to stay calm. I feel really trapped right now in this position on the floor like this with the pain and I need to poop and I can't get up and I'm just, I kind of feel like I'm going to lose it. I'm trying to stay calm because I know if I lose it and the pain just, the me. These were meant to be private messages to her healer, you know, someone she believed was a religious sort of entity, like a spiritual um, leader in her life is what it seems. Like he gets the voice from God's angel, you know? And the fact that he's playing this on a public platform, on a podcast, all her personal information, medical information is sick. And she can't defend herself or say like, don't do this because she's died. And breathing heavy makes the spasms get bigger. So I know I need to stay calm and just pray. Oh. I mean, there's no way we can get you off the floor somehow at all, you think? In these audio messages, it is clear that Stephanie can't get off the floor. She is trapped and has to stay still so that she doesn't have additional spasms causing severe pain. She feels like she can't even be pulled off the floor because she has no leverage. Stephanie expressed that why she stayed so still is because of the pain and spasms, not because A.W. told her to. This is hard to listen to. Mm -hmm. I remember it well, and you can hear it in my voice because I was really, really worried. I was highly concerned. <laughs> Not that I much. I felt so bad for her. And during this time, Stephanie's family and friends were not getting Stephanie to the hospital. And I kept on asking myself, like, why? Because she believes in your quackery that you are the Messiah that is going to help her by just, you know, sending positive vibes. That's why she's in this situation, you dumb idiot. And I was awakening to this and trying to be supportive in whatever decisions Stephanie and her family were making. Even though Stephanie chose not to go to the hospital earlier that day, I still recommended once again a stretcher to come in and take her to the hospital so she didn't feel like she had no choices. Steph was on the floor going into spasms, afraid to move. She had to stay calm or she went into more severe spasms and pain. 
and it was clear she wasn't going anywhere that night and wasn't going to the hospital, so I continued to support her emotionally through audio messages the entire night going back and forth, back and forth. So now we need to explain another layer of this story. There is a woman, one of the plotters, who is handling Stephanie's care and making a lot of her decisions. I think it's interesting that she was completely left out of the article when she played such a critical role in both caring for Stephanie and making her healthcare decisions. Well, there is no known mention of anyone that is a caretaker or best friend of Stephanie's that was guiding her on choices of doctors, choices of care and direction that often conflicted with getting Stephanie the MRI the doctors and myself were hoping she would get. Here is one example of Stephanie's best friend and plotting caretaker helping her make decisions. Here is the caretaker. Also, another claim that he makes all the time is that he knows medical information above doctors. He, like, the doctors are human beings who only can go off of what they've learned in school and in medical journals. But he has the advanced level information. So, again, his whole premise is, like, why would I... I already have God right here. Why am I going to go to a rinky dinky doctor? You know, it's like, obviously they're going to not talk about that because it makes him look bad, but that is the, the big elephant in this story, which is like, why didn't she go to the doctor? Because her entire life is built around healing herself. And that's exactly what you tell people to do. That's why. Choosing which doctor prescribed anti-inflammatory Stephanie should take. Yeah, the anti-inflammatory. So he was recommending, there's a brand called Anabolic Lab that he sells. So he said, if you don't want to, you know, if you want to do the natural thing, because he knows how I am, he said, I sell. You know, he was telling me to go to my family doctor or to urgent care and get an anti-inflammatory. Or he said, you can come to the office and buy, um, he's two. One's called Zymane and the other is Nutridisc. And Taylor looked it up for me. Zymane has milk in it, which I don't like. And the Nutri-Disc has, um, I guess, trace amounts of, like, soy and self shellfish. But um, I think they both use enzymes or something. So Taylor said to me, well, because she looked up, she said, the Nutri-Disc definitely seems better. The evidence shows that AW constantly advocated for doctors and or emergency services all throughout this, including during this time. This prompted, at a certain point, Stephanie's caretaker and best friend to contact who Stephanie and A.W. believed to be a medical doctor. This person who A.W. and Stephanie believed to be a medical doctor was also purporting to be a viral specialist, which led A.W. to believe he was a virologist and epidemiologist as well. This uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Something super fishy with this part. Oh, they... He just believed in that. He was a virologist. Again, this guy associates with, like... I am a medical psychic and I'm going to heal you by, you know, raising my hand and going like this. Okay, now you're going to tell me that you only listen to virologists? Okay. All right, sure. Text from Stephanie to AW's wife. It reads, quote, this is also interesting. He talks all about viruses, which is cool since Ant does. According to Dr. T, viruses have an innate wisdom to hide in parts of the body you know who talks about viruses all the time the medical fucking medium who's also not a medical authority in any way so yeah i'm sure he, it's a novel idea that people can just say whatever they want and be like did you know that viruses started in eggs the medical industry is involved with why eggs are bad okay he said that and he has no medical degree so now he's gonna tell me that oh i thought that someone who was talking about viruses must have been a, a trained professional okay why would you think that can avoid the immune system. When Stephanie received this new doctor's treatment, the plotting caretaker said this. The plotting okay, caretaker. Yeah, she was saying that, yeah, she hopes that it makes it better. We have to have an MRI. Can we hear that one again? And Taylor was saying that, yeah, she hopes that it makes it better. We have to have an MRI. So the plotting caretaker now decided that Stephanie did not need an MRI. And then it was later discovered that Dr. T is not, in fact, a medical doctor. He is an aerospace engineer. Let me say that again. Neither is the medical fucking medium. It's not also a medical doctor. God. Sorry. <sighs> Let me say that again. Uh, actually, an aerospace science person has much more education than this fucking idiot <laughs> who has no education. He is an aerospace engineer. A.W. spent that whole day and the night before trying to support Stephanie into getting an MRI that the doctors wanted. Stephanie's plotting caretaker, however, is hoping that Stephanie does not have to get an MRI after the doctor, we later found out, is an aerospace engineer, worked on Stephanie. This is so fucked. I don't know. I don't know. 
<sighs> Stephanie. The plotting caretaker is the weirdest insult I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, do you mean that plotting caretaker? Mm. And addressed him as doctor. And at the time, I had no reason to believe otherwise, being that I was constantly asking Stephanie to see medical doctors and to go to the hospital. I was certain. Isn't medical in your name? Medical medium? You are not trained in anything. I was, I'm shocked that someone would misrepresent themselves. This had to be a medical doctor. Oh. Next, on September 4th, we have more evidence of the involvement of actual doctors. My chiropractor, when I was on the phone with him a few days ago, I had to sneeze and I said, oh, well, hold on, hold on, I got to sneeze. And he said to me, did you just hold that in? And I said, yeah, and he said, never hold a sneeze in. Here I am assuming that Stephanie is filling in her doctor on her health update in history and that the doctor is sending her for an MRI. And Stephanie is talking to her doctor about holding sneezes in or not. All I've heard you and I say, Anthony, thus far is doctor. Huh? Holding your sneeze? What are we talking about? No. Doctor, doctor, doctor. We have all the evidence and this grossly contrasts the number one plotter's original story in which she claimed that there were no doctors involved up until Stephanie's nipple bled later on. On October 7th, A.W. told Stephanie three times that night that she needed to see a doctor or get one to the house and two times to go to the emergency room. Here's one text. A.W. says, quote, think we will find a doctor to come to the house. Let's look tomorrow. One may come, do a little blood work. Why don't we look tomorrow? Stay cool. And Stay another, cool. A.W. says, quote, light heart. If you get so bad and can't breathe, you can always call emergency. Even though I believe Stephanie has at least five doctors involved at this point, and maybe more. I'm still concerned that she may not be getting the help that she needs. And I tell Stephanie, we should get a doctor to come to the house and do some testing. I start growing concerned that the family never took Stephanie to the hospital. And this mattered to me because it's almost midnight now on top of it. By the morning, <laughs> Stephanie's plotting caretaker chose a doctor for her who was able to talk to Stephanie by 11.27 a.m. Here's a text from Stephanie that's 11.27 a.m. Is that a specific time for a specific reason? Um, also, I love this comment. Next thing you know, medical is an acronym for something. He didn't actually mean medical. Yes. Magical elf dedicated in conscious alignment language. <laughs> that's what it meant the whole time. Come on. Everyone knows that. I never would put myself in the same vein as a emergency care doctor. Why would anyone think that? Quote. Taylor has a friend, Dr. B, I spoke with this morning, and this is who she is and what she is recommending me to do. It will have to be three different practitioners because few doctors know all of them. So now I'm under the impression that Stephanie will not have one more new doctor, but instead four new medical doctors on top of the other doctors she had been working with already. Mm -hmm. These four new medical doctors or the result sure. of me advocating for a doctor to come to the house or to get emergency services. I want to point out something. Again, like, does his followers not think that this is very bizarre? Also, if he is as magical and healing as he claims to be, why, why would she need four doctors? Give her the celery juice, right? Heal her over the phone like you can do. <laughs> I, I don't know that I found to be disturbing about the plotting caretaker's recollection of this. Anthony, he said, well, you can have, if you, as long as you just have somebody come in. I'm like, you can't have somebody come in. This is in the fucking 30s. They popped to, a doctor's gonna make house calls. The plotting caretaker is acting like it was so hard as she explained the story to me, but in reality, she had this doctor involved the next morning. She was acting like A.W. was suggesting something so outlandish. And if it were, were really so hard to get a doctor to the, to the house, then... They should have had emergency services come with a stretcher to help Stephanie get to the hospital, like A.W. had suggested numerous times previously. Stephanie was sold the belief that this doctor friend of the plotting caretaker was a miracle worker. <sighs> she texted me, quote, Taylor said people who can't walk or get into Dr. B's office without being carried in leave walking. That is something that the medical medium community would believe because people that like medical medium they're already believing the unbelievable. Okay. Oh my God. It's so funny. It's like, it's like a scammer, like any of these self-help scammers going, oh, 
God, these scammers are so bad. Am I right? It's like, we're talking about you as well. <laughs> like, oh, these scammers just want money. Anyways, buy my course. It's not a scam. It's like, no, you're also a scam. Oh, oh yeah. The, the, she told me that, um, that she believed that this doctor could heal her. Like, it's so crazy, right? It's like, that's exactly the stuff that you say, that everything is uh, Epstein-Barr virus, cancer is Epstein-Barr virus. And, you know, any problem you have, you can drink your celery and be healed from it. I don't, there's no comparison between this dude and you. It makes a lot of sense to me as to why she would believe that wholeheartedly. What was happening is that Stephanie was avoiding proper medical care. She said, quote, I don't have a good feeling about a doctor, about having a doctor come here to draw blood. They will want me to go to the hospital and I'm sure, and that doesn't work for me for two reasons. One, I don't. Again, okay, so that that part about drawing blood. Okay, let's take a let's take a little trip down memory lane. And I specifically listened to this episode before because I was like, this is sounds insane. Uh, let's see, unless she okay here, blood draw, bloodletting, and vampirism. Okay, this is a whole episode. And now this is way after she passed away, but I'm sure that uh, this belief of his allegedly was probably a long time developed, um, it says many people battling symptoms, conditions, or chronic illnesses are subjected to routine blood tests and draws. How can these routine blood draws affect the body? In this episode, I uncover important truths about blood draws and reveal why the blood testing and donation system is broken and outdated. I explain how blood testing affects the immune system and why this can be dangerous, especially for the chronically ill. Find out how to determine the amount needed when getting your blood drawn and tested and learn how much of your blood is discarded and wasted and how very little of your blood is used for the testing process. Listen as I share what variables should be considered before getting a blood test and how gender can affect these variables. I cover what to ask from your doctor when it comes to getting your blood tested and how to best protect yourself before and after a blood draw. Okay, so he's got a, he's instilling fear into people and this whole thing, I'll play just a couple seconds of it, but he's like, basically insinuating that doctors are trying to like drink your blood. Like doctors are kind of like the conspiracy theory, like, oh, in the political office, they're all like, you know, they're, they look so youthful because they're in Hollywood. They're youthful because they're like putting children's blood in their face. It's sort of in that vein, like doctors have nefarious reasons as to why they're taking so much blood and using it for who knows what. Wink, wink, we all know. Here, I'll play it for a second. One, if we're all about science, specifics, details, truth, facts, then this is the most blatant, negligent, careless process we have to date. What do you mean build back your blood quickly? The variables range on all levels. How much blood was drawn? How weak is your immune system to begin with? How chronically ill are you? What kind of symptoms do you live with? What kind of demands, stress, okay. and lotion of the immune system that's inside their bloodstream has been removed? People get the flu after a blood draw or any other bug going around, you're more susceptible or they get more symptoms of what they're already battling because pathogens travel when they're not being controlled. Okay. That's not the vampire part. It's somewhere in there. If you want to listen to it, it's episode 18, blood draw. Um, but yeah, like, okay. So he's like, I don't know why she would ever think this you know, very extreme follower of mine would think that getting a blood test isn't the best idea ever. It's like, you're calling the doctors vampires in your work. And now you're telling someone who's, you know, a, a follower to the, you know, not to the T, I guess, because she put lemon in her celery juice once in a while, but someone who believes that you have a special gift. They are not, obviously it's like, it's almost maybe she believed it was a test because she knows that he is against that. Why would he tell her then? Oh, go to the doctor. It doesn't make sense. If like, it makes sense as a human being, like, hey, this is all bullshit. You know, like, I just want you to get help. That's one thing. But he's also maintaining that he is this God. It's frustrating. Anyways, if you have, you want to laugh, if you want to laugh, go listen to that episode. And also the episode about aliens. He literally says he was like chosen by aliens. Which one is that one? Uh, aliens, prophets, and monsters. This is the description of that one. 
we are at a point in history where it was well established and even accepted that there are UFOs flying around the Earth's atmosphere and in the skies above us, and that extraterrestrials are real. Okay, says who? But all right. What else is there to know? What about early civilizations? Did people back then have any knowledge of their life forms or life forms that looked humanoid like and were not normally here from this Earth? How were ancient civilizations involved with aliens and to what extent? Not only do we have the extraterrestrials to think about, but what about other creatures existing among us, creatures that aren't your everyday wildlife? Are they aliens or something else? And maybe the most important question, how did we all get here? Are we a result of evolution or were we created with more intent? Were we created by God or the earth? In this episode, I share my story of what happened to me decades ago and how it changed many things for me. And basically he goes on, he's like, I was driving, I was at a diner with my friend. Doesn't say which city, doesn't say which state, doesn't say what his friend's name was, doesn't say the name of the diner. No, it's very vague. And I looked out in the distance and I saw a a sphere in the air and it dropped down and it, you know, talked to me. It's like, what? (laughs) You're not only chosen by God and angels, you're also chosen by extraterrestrial aliens, I guess. I don't know. So that's another one if you want to laugh, uh, listen to. Okay, back to it. One, I don't have health insurance. Two, I don't want to get trapped and fall down the rabbit hole. It feels scary. Okay, yeah. Not having medical insurance is a big reason why people do not go to the emergency room as well every single day in America. So that is a valid, uh, if not heartbreaking reason. And again, she doesn't want to get stuck in the rabbit hole. Obviously, she's a very extreme alternative health, you know, practicer. Stephanie knew that she needed to go to the hospital, it seems. The article conveniently left out that part of this text because it shows that Stephanie was avoiding care despite the fact that A.W. was consistently advising her to go to the hospital. Sharing the full truth about this would not have suited their narrative. We have proof that Stephanie had at least four doctors coming in and out of her house at this point. They left that out of the article because it would not support their narrative. The plotters left that out of the story they were trying to tell me in their recruitment speeches. Dr. B gave Stephanie- Recruitment speeches, talking on the phone to her about them trying to get some attention about this scammer. Recruitment speeches, okay. A two hour assessment and examination and was constantly doing consults with her. Dr. B oversaw sending at least three other doctors to Stephanie's house. I want to point out here that AW will not go against doctors' diagnoses, opinions, prescribed recommendations, assessments, or courses of treatment. At all times, AW... This is the legalese uh, that she's reading for him. This is the legal disclaimer he has on his website, essentially. ...ported and reinforced doctors' diagnoses and their recommendations and techniques. (laughs) AW thought they were doing health assessments on Stephanie and taking care of the breast lump and whatever else. Here's a text from Stephanie on October 21st. It says, quote, new Cairo is coming tomorrow and Dr. B wants to know if it's okay to work on my breast tissue. She has a technique that can open up and help release the swelling and pressure. Then on October 15th, Stephanie's nipple starts bleeding on the same breast as the cyst. Here's a text message from Stephanie. It says, quote, what do you think about me bleeding from my left nipple on same breast as cyst? Mm -hmm. Anthony replies, quote, I'm not liking that at all. The very day that the nipple was bleeding, there was a doctor there at the house. And there was- Why doesn't he say, I don't know. I have no training in anything. I'm a scam artist. Go to the doctor. He's like, I don't like that. As if he has an authority about to what, like what that could possibly mean. You don't know anything. It could be totally fine or it could be not. You don't know. You're not a fucking doctor. You're there the next day as well. We have so much evidence of all these doctors going in and out of her house and physically working on her during this time. Chiropractors? The doctors were in charge of Stephanie's care. I had no business interfering at all. I did not know these doctors either, who they were personally. I didn't have any relationships with them. Here is a voice text on October 13th from Stephanie. I also wanted to let you know that um, Dr found a chiropractor that does the exact things that she does and she's really close to me so she's coming to the house today after two o'clock and again a a, a chiropractor is not going to take it's not an oncologist they're not going to take care of your cancer diagnosis or have any authority at all and they're also inclined to be like i'll just come for the next six weeks forever and help you it's like they don't know anything the text from stephanie on october 13th that says quote Cairo woman in on her way here now. 
She said, time spent here today might just be figuring out what she will do for me. A.W. replies, awesome, she's coming. Here's another text from Stephanie. Okay. Quote, she assessed me with lots of good questions, felt around my back, said it in my neck, we're really out of whack. Did I think what were some... And again, he is able in his mind to, and he claims that anybody, every single person on earth, he can tell what the diagnosis is. So he knows according to his own, like, I don't know, admitted gift. He knows that she has breast cancer this whole time because he can go like this and go, you have breast cancer. That's his gift from the spirit. Okay, so why is he letting a chiropractor even spend any time? Again, it's like, if you believe this, which is what he's saying, is like, I just said, go to the doctor. I just said, go to the doctor. I just said, go to the doctor. Okay, that's gonna protect him legally, probably. But on the other side, why is not every single follower going, what the fuck am I spending 30 bucks on this book then for? If uh, the answer is, go to the doctor, the place where I can't get any answers, right? If you have a chronic illness. <laughs> so he's useless, Adjustment with a tool on my neck and back said felt like had ribs out went over identifying lots of emotions that are held on my back also she felt my low lumbar through my stomach okay again we have so much evidence of so many doctors involved and in and out of her house daily at this point chiropractors These are all doctors that the plotting caretaker selected they were not sending her to a specialist or an oncologist they were not suggesting mammograms or thermography or biopsies or ultrasounds. While a I'm pretty sure that the plotting caretaker is just another person who is into alternative health and healing methods too. So because they're friends, I, I don't know. And also it's like, that's not, it's not like she's a ward of the state or she's a, you know, a power of attorney over this adult woman. W said specifically, quote, might have to get that breast looked at under ultrasound and other. Can't fuck around with that. Stephanie says, quote, my intuition all along about it since it began in March wasn't feeling good. Anthony says, have to keep a close eye on that. Stephanie says, haven't even told my dad these new discoveries. He would get so scared as his sister had breast cancer. Anthony says, quote, can't let that go without care. Here is another text from Stephanie after AW continuously encouraged her to get blood work for her doctors. It says, quote, Yes, I know what you mean. You're right, as long as results aren't too bad or scary. At this point, I started getting highly concerned that there are other factors involved here. Here is another example of doctors in Stephanie's home in October. This text says, quote, haven't gotten up yet today. New Cairo guy came yesterday. He cracked my back, which super locked up, causing headaches and feels better now. Also cracked back. Very little, so I She has like a million chiropractors coming. She needs to go to an oncologist or go to a... a physician that can like actually t I think she just it sounds like she doesn't want to know she wants to believe that you know if you believe positively if you trust in people who say like oh I have the secret I have the secret then you're you'll be good and it's sad because she's avoiding it because I think she probably may know at this time she's got something very serious but she's got all these people willing to take her money and tell her oh I'll heal you with this technique and meanwhile she's got aggressive cancer that's you know pushing on her spine be gentle. Front left ribs just under breast towards side body, really, really painful as if they are cracked. Stephanie is explaining that she has been physically worked on by a doctor eight days after her nipple bled. At this worked point on. in the story, the nipple just started bleeding. And we have evidence of how many instances in which I encourage Stephanie to go to a medical doctor. All I continue to hear myself say constantly is doctor, 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 doctor. And yet, I need to point out that in the number one plotter's original story three years ago that started this mess, she claimed that I never suggested a doctor's intervention until after the nipple started bleeding. That time stuff was just so bad. And I think Anthony had started telling people, I told her to go see a doctor, you know, because he did at the very end. And so I think that they maybe dismiss a lot of what happened because like, well, Anthony told her to go see a doctor, but it's yeah. like, that's not what really happened. And again, like if he, if he's the one who can tell, if he can do a scan on you 
via his brain, which is what he claims he can do. Like he just intuitively can tell what's wrong. If he's not saying you, you're going to die in a year. You need to go immediately right now. Do not wait. Listen to me, please, please, please. This is the only thing that can heal you. Okay. That's one way to do it. And this way he's like, go to a doctor. Oh, you, you should, you know, you should for your family's sake. So they don't worry about you. you should get your blood drawn. Like, okay. And she doesn't like, she doesn't want to be involved in any of that. And she's listening to him for his cues. And he's like, Oh yeah, go see a chiropractor. Yeah. That's sounds good no worries here it's like okay so she he's not panicking so she's not gonna panic i guess yeah that one's hard for me i am such a truth teller like honestly to be able to like manipulate things like that just gets me fired up anthony never told steph to go to a doctor he never he never said to her like do, until she started bleeding from her nipples, he never said, oh. like, go to a doctor. Oh, I see. Um, at, at, after she started bleeding from her nipples, he did, he did say that, I think. We just listened to the number one plotter saying, first of all, she's saying nipples as if it's plural when really it was just one nipple that bled. She got that wrong. We also okay, listened bitch. to her saying that A.W. never told Stephanie to go or see a doctor until she started bleeding from her nipple. As you can see from our evidence, that is completely false. Now, another layer to explain. I mean, to be fair, she said, I think. And she said, yeah, he didn't really say go see a doctor, like seriously, until then. Okay. The handling of Stephanie's care that has been left out of the plotter's story and out of the article. Here is an audio about the plotting caretaker. Taylor, goodness, she's so pushy. Can we repeat that? Taylor, goodness, she's so pushy. In Stephanie's own words, the plotting caretaker was so pushy and she was the one in charge of selecting the doctors, including the aerospace engineer that Stephanie believed to be a medical doctor. This was never mentioned in the number one plotter's original story, and this was never mentioned in the article. This caretaker was either anonymous in the article as a source or not in the article at all. Meanwhile, she played one of the largest roles in all of Stephanie's healthcare. Here is another recording. Um, no one else in my family goes to the doctor, so... Uh... Can we play that again? Um, no one else in my family goes to the doctor, so, uh... This is Stephanie saying in her own words that her family resists going to medical doctors, highlighting the fact that avoiding medical care is a pattern that was established long before the situation and long before Stephanie had ever heard of medical medium. My brother. Yeah, because that's exactly who you're trying to target. <sighs> I mean, this is, I'm, I'm arguing like stupidity because we all know as rational human beings that this guy is wrong he was wrong with what he did he's a liar he's a grifter but people believe it because they're in desperate situations or they were you know grown up in a certain mindset or whatever and they're gonna latch on to things that aren't logical or realistic <laughs> and it's like man it's just sad oh, but uh, we were going to call the family doctor I had growing up. No one else in my family goes to the doctor, so uh, I could ask him to write it. Uh, I just have to know exactly which test. Later, it was confirmed that Stephanie and her brother got the family doctor to write a script. Here is a text from Stephanie saying, quote, Just want to make sure you know I don't have a doc that's overseeing all this. Just a mishmash of random people. Last blood test, I called childhood doc to write a script, and he did it but was uncomfortable doing so without seeing me. But still did it all, even called with results, and wanted me to speak to specialists. I just told him I'll stay in touch. Just don't trust him. I don't like him really as a doc. I don't know what the protocols are for writing a blood script here or what this doctor could or could not do. All I know is what Steph texted me here. Next, we have a text from Stephanie on October 21st that says, quote, haven't even told my dad these new discoveries he would get so scared as his sister had breast cancer. And here's a recording of the plotting caretaker. Um, so anyways, there was Stephanie in her dad's house. I was the only person that, you know, was supporting her during that. She didn't want her family to know anything was wrong because then they'd take her to the hospital and get him at MRI. Can we hear that one again? Um, so anyways, there was Stephanie in her dad's house. I was the only person that, you know, was supporting her during that. She didn't want her family to know anything was wrong because then they'd take her to the hospital and get him at MRI. The plotting caretaker is saying that Stephanie did not want her family to know anything was wrong because then they would take her to the hospital to get her an MRI. Yeah, because she thinks Anthony Williams got her back. Medical medium's helping me through his, you know, special powers. 
And here's a text from Stephanie to AW on October 24th. It reads, quote, it sucks I can't get out to go do thermography and ultrasound since I'm not telling my dad right now. Stephanie sent a text to AW's wife on October 25th saying, quote, my biggest concern at the moment is my breast and how I'm going to get to the thermogram office. My dad doesn't know anything about it. It will put him into major stress mode and that much more worried. And here is a text in which Stephanie admits she wasn't telling her dad what was going on. She says, quote, I have to get a thermogram tomorrow, which will be the first time I leave my house. So I'm nervous all around. And on top of that, my dad will take me and I lied to him that it's imaging for back and to find a reason for throwing up so much. He had prostate cancer and his sister had breast. So he will really go over the top if he knew this right now. Here is another text from Stephanie on November 16th, where she says, quote, can't talk out loud. She needed help. She needed support. This is like, I don't know. I, I guess like what, what was he supposed to do? You know, stop responding sooner. But like I felt like because he does stop responding at the end when things get really bad and it seems like she's going to pass away, which is ultimately what she did. But he was like, you know, entertaining this for so long. And yes, he said, go to the doctor. Okay. But she's telling him all this very, very, very serious information. He's like responding like, oh, it could be shingles. It could be this. So, you know, you should probably get your blood drawn so your family doesn't worry about it. Like this person is, is in need of serious, serious help. And is saying these things about like, oh, my dad doesn't know. It's like, she needed somebody to step in and help her and you can't do anything. She's a grown adult, but it's just like so tragic watching it back. Like she thought that this guy was going to help her. She was like, okay, this is my savior. This is the person who's going to, you know, fix all this for me. So I don't have to deal with the reality of what's happening. And it's sad because he was there to collect the money from everyone else and from her in the beginning because he's like, oh, this person is desperate and needs my help. Okay. 1099. Oh, okay. $200 on the phone, whatever it is. And this is the type of people he's trying to attract. People who are so just down the rabbit hole of can't trust anybody. Everything's a scam in the sense of like, you know, big pharma, nothing. You can't go to the hospital. You can't tell your dad you got a thing. It's like, oh man, it sucks so deep in it. This Because my dad is downstairs and can hear me. Got to get a handle on any of it before I talk to him about it. Here is another text from Stephanie that says, quote, do you think it's a good idea to tell my dad I'm going to have rib stomach area looked at? If I tell him all the detailed truth, he might lose it. Anthony replies, quote, Steph, I don't know. It's your pops. Only you got the answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that sounds pretty uh, hands off there. I don't know. It's your dad. I don't know. It's like, okay, good job, dude. The whole situation is tragic. All it these is. texts and communications show that Stephanie wasn't getting the care I hoped and told her to get. And a big reason, mm -hmm. maybe the biggest reason, she wasn't doing what I told her to do and what I hoped she would do was that she was so worried about telling her family and the truth of telling them what was going on. She was trying to figure out how to get in front of a medical doctor. He said, I don't know, it's your pops. That doesn't sound like he told her anything. And, it, and, and at the end of the day, it's like, who are you, dude? <laughs> Who are you to tell her anything anyways? I don't know. At her breast without her dad knowing, and she was afraid to go to the hospital, in part because she didn't mm -hmm. have health insurance and was worried about the financial aspect as well. This is really the crux of the issue, and yet none of this was in the article. These are also dynamics that AW had no control over, beyond saying over and over again that she should get medical treatment. Then on October know. 23rd, my wife and I... It seems like they don't question anything. If he says it, it was, it's all a witch hunt and it's all plotters against him because they're trying to run a competing medical psychic company. They seem to believe it, I guess. And I think that they would probably try to avoid being labeled as plotter number 504, you know, if you dissent away from this cult that has formed here. I don't know anything more cultish than that. There you go. He said it best. Found out for the first time what kind of terrible conditions and dire situation Stephanie had been living in. This is one of his other followers who is a medical medium protocol follower and teaches other people how to use the medical medium information to heal themselves. So another quack. Before this, 
All A.W. and his wife knew was that Stephanie had to lay on the floor for a long period of time because her back was so bad. They didn't know that that was her only option. Here is a text thread from Stephanie and A.W.'s wife in which Stephanie said, quote, Do you like this company's blankets for beds? Mine are dead. Been using an old duvet to cover me, but it's getting colder out. Anthony's wife replies, yes, I love their blankets and duvets. I'll get you one of those as well. Anything else you need? Sheets, pillows. Do you want a reading pillow and a wedge or just the wedge? What size is your bed? Stephanie says, oh, cool. Yes, I do need sheets. I literally have a sad bedding situation of only one fitted sheet from 20 years ago. That's so embarrassing. As far as a regular pillow goes, I can use all the time. I don't have either. I think wedge and reading pillow in case one is more supportive. I have a twin mattress directly on the floor, no box spring, etc. Anthony's wife says, Steph, I'm thinking you need a new mattress. The one you have can't be helping your situation. Are you okay if I get you a new one? Stephanie says, oh my, that's too much. You're right. This one is a chemical one I've had all my life. Chemical Anthony's wife one. says, also, I want to get you a simple frame to get it off the floor. It has to be off the floor with a back injury like you have. Stephanie says, I would love to throw this one away. Anthony's wife replies, awesome, let's do this. And Stephanie says, you're making me cry. This is so great. My Come feet here. hang over bottom of bed. I just want to summarize the situation Stephanie was living in. Um, she was on an old childhood twin size mattress on the floor. Stephanie was 37 years old at this time, which means the mattress was nearly 40 years old. She had no box spring. She had no bed frame. She had a fitted sheet from 20 years ago. She described her blankets as being dead. Quote, God. She doesn't. This poor woman. Why are you talking about her? I mean, they're trying to defend themselves. Like, that's why she had a back injury. But yes, it turns out that she also had a tumor growing in her spine. I'm sure that was part of the problem as well. They're like ignoring that fact that was talked about in the article that the, the cancer was like eroding her spine during this time. So I don't, I mean, all they're doing is making, embarrassing her. Like, oh, she was so poor and she had an old bed and she was on the floor and it was so pathetic. And here's a voice memo of her screaming and crying because she fell down. It's like, this is horrendous. Once again. Regular pillows, her feet are hanging over the bottom of the bed on the floor. This sounds to me like it was the worst possible situation for her back, especially and for her overall health. When my wife and I found out about Steph being on the floor for almost six months, we were devastated. It, it was awful. I noticed that the article makes it seem that Steph and I were constantly in contact for years, and through this time, Stephanie was very ill, but that's not accurate. There were lots of gaps in time lapse. I had a lot. That's not true. I, I didn't talk to her all the time, just sometimes when I would ghost her, like, then I wouldn't respond, so that makes me a hero. <laughs> God, I hate this guy so much. Thank you, Josephine Henry. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Josephine Henry says, glad you are doing this. Thank you. It's psh, This guy needs to be stopped. They're going to be calling me number number 0 0.1 plotter now. But, oh, oops. Oh. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it's hard because this one kind of not hits close to home but it's so serious like obviously people have died after you know being involved with this guy listening to this advice this is the stakes because okay someone gets diagnosed with a very serious illness or something and then all of a sudden now they're already sort of like against big pharma they're seeing their instagram feed everyone's against canola oils and this and that and you just need to go to a chiropractor and they can heal everything it's all about energy anyways and look drink celery juice uh um rocky's drinking celery juice and he's old sylvester salone and he you know he does looks pretty good and oh yeah adam sandler uh, says it's good too and this guy goes on inside edition and you know they're treating him like he's a legitimate source of information so yeah sure okay i have cancer but i'm gonna heal myself i don't want to go through chemo i don't want to Put myself through pain i want to drink celery juice and you know just believe it's gone i see the appeal but as we see in this case it does not end well so thank you josephine it's it's that's why it's like it's it's more dire and serious than a a mel robbins counting down from five yes that could also lead to a death because she claims like these little tricks can save you from a suicide you know like which is bullshit but it's this is i think even more serious because it's like health conditions so ah, thank you here's here's something that medical medium says thinking what you are doing is heaven sent but in truth it's hell bent that's you bro that's you there's there's something i call bullshitting yourself 
Yeah, he does it very well. Thank you, Josephine, again. Okay, here we go. Going on. You know, Amber, we have a witness that knows one of the plotters who is there seeing Stephanie on the floor with clumps of dust in her hair. And a doctor in late October diagnosed Stephanie with a dust allergy and said she needed to get her room cleaned and the house cleaned. There was too much dust everywhere. This lines up. They are embarrassing the fuck out of this woman. Oh my God. She had dust in her hair. They are really trying to paint a picture like this is a peasant woman who was in dire situation, has nothing to do with medical medium. He barely was around. This is sad. To the witness who God. earlier saw Stephanie laying on the floor with clumps of dust on her body and head. Clumps of dust? It's, um, it's just, it's really, really sad. And um, here's a text from Stephanie to Anthony's wife that says, quote, Cairo yesterday said, I'm showing up very sensitive to dust and said my room has... Why would the chiropractor have an opinion as to whether you were sensitive to dust in the first place? And how many people have a room so dusty that you have clumps of it in your hair? Give me a fucking break. He cleaned really well. Stephanie's tragic living situation was left out of the article, like many other things. We have many recordings of Stephanie describing a very disturbing living situation that out of respect for Stephanie, we are not going to release today. <laughs> oh, today. Oh, okay, tomorrow you'll be fine with it? Oh my God. You've already disparaged her entire, you know, legacy on earth. So you might as well go all in at this point. <laughs> you know, they're like, we're going to keep the really bad stuff to ourselves, but just trust us. It's really fucking bad. You've already said quite a bit. A.W. realized that this was a situation Stephanie had been living in all this time for over five months. Doctors were coming into the house all throughout this time, examining and assessing Stephanie you mean chiropractors. and chiropractors. her while Stephanie was on a 40-year-old twin-size mattress on the floor with her feet hanging off of it. Anthony did not know because he was not there in person and he was not- handed. Again, she, the cancer moved to her spine. Who gives a fuck about these details other than to make her embarrassed and she is dead. She cannot defend herself. It's just like, I feel bad. God. Her care- he wasn't her health consultant. He was not spying on her. He was under the impression that she was under the care of her doctors and was constantly trying to get Stephanie to get care from her doctors. The doctors all saw the conditions that Stephanie was living in, and apparently no one thought to try to address that. If they did, A.W. was not informed. A back problem laying on a mattress like that that's one to one and a half feet off the floor means having to push yourself up off the floor to get up and then fall back down on the mattress from standing to get back down. This should have been quickly identified and rectified by anyone who was witnessing this. Couldn't. Okay. Person. I don't know. <laughs> For over five months now, while Stephanie is suffering with serious back issues, she has been stuck on the floor in these conditions. And now it's starting to make sense as to why Stephanie couldn't get up with her back injury. She had no leverage and Stephanie had to push herself up off the floor in order to get up instead of being able to gently sit up to be able to pivot, to have your feet touch the floor, and to gradually get up and stand with a bed that's already 30 plus inches off the ground. If Stephanie did try to get up, that would mean falling down, essentially, onto the floor multiple times per day, which oh is a God. significant amount of impact for someone with a serious back injury. After Anthony realized all of this- How did they know she has a serious back injury? Who diagnosed that? She asked him if it was a slip disc, and he's like, yeah. Was that ever confirmed? The, like all, these details aren't making sense. They're harping on various. She had a sheet. It's just embarrassing facts. There's a, a, she had dust in her hair and she had her feet hanging off the twin bed and this and that. And she was really poor. It's like all that is is insulting. There's no proof that helps lead me to any other conclusion. Like oh, he must be innocent. He and his wife were beyond alarmed and immediately took action. They bought Stephanie a new mattress, a new bed frame, organic sheets, pillows, a mattress pad, a mattress cover and a duvet. And Here's a text nice. from Stephanie to A.W.'s wife after she got the new bed. It says, quote, you're magically amazing. Gosh, my heart. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it beyond beyond. Thank you. Yes. Can't wait to get in a bed, a nice, clean, fresh bed. Mm. Wow. Mm. Anthony's wife replies, yes. Oh my goodness. Aunt and I can't stop talking about it. We had no idea you were on an older mattress on the floor. You poor girl. No wonder why you've had it so hard. Now, after getting the new bed, 
Stephanie went from not being able to walk, being completely bedridden, being barely able to get up off the ground, to then walking shortly after she got the new bed. It made life so much easier because instead of needing- Oh, so medical medium was actually the hero once again, because he got her the duvet covers <laughs> or whatever. Oh, so we all misjudged him, guys. We misjudged. There's, there's something I call bullshitting yourself. Okay. Use her muscles and, and a lot of energy, etc., to peel herself up off the floor. She was practically standing when she put her legs over the side of the bed. Within one week after getting the new bed, she was walking. And this meant that she was able to walk up a 20-step staircase to finally get to the doctor for testing. She was also able to finally go. To I thought there was a million doctors that were coming to her her uh, bedside every day. Which one is it? She finally got to the doctor now, or she had been seeing doctors who were doing tests uh, at her house all the time. Ugh. Which one is it? They're normally and not on the floor. Here is a recording of Stephanie's plotting mm. caretaker describing the situation before the new bed. Plotting. Stephanie was in so much pain she had to crawl to the bathroom, and she the bedroom she was in was up. You know, a whole flight of steps. She couldn't walk down the steps. Can we hear that again? Stephanie was in so much pain, she had to crawl to the bathroom. And she, the bedroom she was in was up, you know, a whole flight of steps. She couldn't walk down the steps. Notice here, she says that Stephanie could not walk down the stairs in her house and that she was crawling to the bathroom. Here is a text in which Stephanie describes how things improved after the new bed. A.W.'s wife says, quote, getting out of bed with it being higher up will be easier on your back injury. Stephanie says, yes, it's so much easier as when I get up, I'm practically standing. Anthony says, is it easier getting off the bed to the bathroom and back? Is bed comfortable enough on the back? Stephanie says, yes, as soon as I put my legs over the side, I can stand right away. I love that. This was a really pivotal moment for Stephanie. She went from over five months of being trapped on the floor to her new supportive lifted bed that she could now put her legs over the edge of and be practically standing. This is the thing that allowed her to find Okay, but then like not that long after this, according to the article, she loses her entire ability to walk because of the cancer. So what did it actually do? I'm glad that she had a little comfort in her life, I'm glad. But it does not prove anything to me. To get out of her house, down the, her steps, and go to the doctor. Here is Stephanie a week after getting her new bed, climbing upstairs to see a doctor. She says, quote, got thermogram done today on breasts. On November 2nd, she said in another text, quote, oh gosh, today I even had to climb 20 steps and the place inside was like a maze. Interestingly, the plotters have had some really surprisingly negative things to say about this new bed that need to be addressed. Bottom line is, around then, that's when she started having blood come out of her nipples. So now we're maybe like three weeks into her laying on the floor. You can't lay on the floor. I'll buy you a mattress. He bought, so he bought her a mattress. I mean, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? So he gets her a mattress. Can we hear that one again? Oh my God. The bottom line is, around then, that's when she started having blood come out of her nipples. So now we're maybe like three weeks into her laying on the floor. You can't lay on the floor. I'll buy you a mattress. He bought, so he bought her a mattress. I mean, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? So he gets her a mattress. First of all, Stephanie was stuck on the floor for over five years. Okay, so they're gonna go over the details one more time, but I guess what, what it's the outrage is, it's like there was cancer moving from her breast, spreading through her body. That is the reason why she's in pain, at least somewhat. The fact that she had a bed that's old, that's covered in dust, it's sort of, yeah, not great, but I don't think totally relevant to the whole entire story. Yes, he did a nice thing. He did a nice thing buying her the bed, but almost it's like, oh, this will solve the problem. Not that you should be going to a hospital right immediately now to get you know take care of this problem they're like oh it's just the bed it's because you're sleeping on a bad bed that's why it almost downplays the entire thing once again it's not three weeks second of all aw and his wife did not just get her a new mattress they got her a bed frame a mattress a duvet sheets pillows etc because the point was to get her up off the floor okay you don't have to pat yourself on the back 10 more times which as we previously explained Gosh. was what made the biggest difference in finally getting her to go in to see a doctor. Next, we have a recording of the number one plotter with similar sentiments. I mean, oh, like Anthony, to me, one of the most incriminating things is like Anthony sending Stephanie a new mattress. Like 
it's such a picture of the whole scenario to me, Amber, because it's like, he bought her a freaking mattress. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't send my friends mattresses when their backs hurt. Like, that's like so decent of him. And somebody was broke. He would send her supplements and stuff. Like, that's so decent of him. Again, it was not just a mattress. It was a bed frame and everything else because the point- Bitch, we don't care. We heard it already. God. To get her up off the floor. It was also um, a pack of gum. These plotters did not acknowledge the pack of gum that he also threw into the package because that does not fit their narrative. <laughs> this number one plotter is saying that it's incriminating. Incriminating. She's saying it like, like, why would you buy her a bed? And I mean, when you're a kind, decent person and you realize that somebody's been suffering, you, you buy somebody a bed who's, when you realize that they've been living on the floor for over five months with a major back injury, with dust collecting in their hair, somebody who's been in pain, pushing themselves up off the floor or crawling to the bathroom. Regardless of what the doctor said or this didn't say about Steph's back or condition, it wasn't about that at this point in time. It was critical to get Steph off the floor. Action had to be taken immediately when we found out. Stephanie was in a tragic situation. She was on a tiny twin-sized mattress, a childhood mattress, nearly 40 years old. Oh my God. This is what they're saying, like, caused the cancer, I guess. This is the true source of her death, was that she was on a twin-sized mattress, (laughs) apparently, because they're going to repeat it again. With her feet hanging off, no bed frame, no box spring, clumps of dust in her hair and on her body, no leverage to push herself off the floor, and she had to crawl to the bathroom on a good day. Some days, couldn't make it to the bathroom. It's beyond. This poor woman. This poor woman. They are taking anything, any of her dignity, and crushing it up and fucking flushing it down the toilet. Publicly posting this about her bathroom use in her bed. Her dusty hair. It's like they're insulting her farther than any of these plotters could be insulted. Jesus Christ. Heartbreaking, really. And these are details that were never mentioned to me in the plotter stories. Anthony, did the article- Maybe they didn't want to share those details because it makes her look, it's embarrassing to somebody, (laughs) those details. And they have nothing to do with her cancer that Stephanie was stuck on a nearly 40-year-old mattress on the floor with no box spring and no bed frame with her feet hanging off the bottom? No. Did the article mention that Stephanie was diagnosed with a dust allergy because the room needed to be cleaned? Diagnosed with a dust allergy. Oh, who diagnosed that? A chiropractor. How would the fuck... Was she has dust in her spine or something? Not mentioned at all. Did the article mention that the action that you and your wife took immediately is what made all the difference in Stephanie finally being able to make it out to go to the doctor to get medical testing? No. Did the oh, art- poor man. He is just, the hatred for him is just so unwarranted. Oh, he did everything he could. Poor soul. She was, he had dust in her hair. He did something for her. Everyone should shut up about it. Leave me alone. I helped. Narcissist, man. Mention how Stephanie was in chronic spasms on the floor because her bed was so uncomfortable that she preferred laying on the floor propped up with towels in agony. No. Did the article say that she was on the floor? And also this like dramatic like questioning. Did the article say this? No, they didn't say that. <laughs> and I just, I, it's not about me guys, but I am the perfect man. Doctors were going in and out of her room and working on her and adjusting her back and neck. No. At this point, I spent- Again, who, doctors don't adjust your back and neck. That is a chiropractor. That is not a medical doctor. Several weeks continuously encouraging a resistant Stephanie to get more testing and to follow her doctor's orders like I had been doing this whole time. In December 2017, Stephanie finally goes to the hospital and she was diagnosed with cancer. She went through conventional cancer treatment for a long time. The article completely left out the fact that Stephanie had conventional cancer treatment for almost a year. They tried to paint it like she was a medical medium devotee, like she had been applying all the information, and then she died of cancer. But here are some recordings from two of the plotters describing the conventional treatment she did receive. Because Steph really 
went all in with conventional treatment. She was getting radiation. She was taking like, eye brands, which is a chemo drug. And like, she was doing everything. And I mean, she got diagnosed at stage four. So at that point, it's already, you know, in a lot of cases too late. And a lot of the procrastinating, I think, be, be came and happened because she's getting her advice from him. Oh, just, just here's a new bed. That'll fix it. It's just yoga. Don't do so much yoga next time. Uh, okay, let's read the article because there, we haven't looked at it in a little bit. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. So she, she sent him more blood work and started discussing mammograms and biopsies. She asked him, okay, she asked him, so asked medical medium to join her on a call with a doctor she was now speaking with, and he said he couldn't. When we talk next about my breasts, can it be on the phone, and can we ask spirit, okay, that's the angel in his ear, to help us see what's happening? Thank you, I love you. He didn't respond. She wrote again the next day after a family doctor called with her x-ray and blood results. What is a compression fracture? I'm kind of freaking out. I need a plan. My goal and vision is that spirit and yourself will RD and scan me and put me on a perfect protocol and my breast will heal itself with nothing invasive. Okay, she's being very clear about this is her hope and wish. Hey, medical medium, can you do this for me? This is what I want. Then the next day, Schutzman, that's the wife, Texted her, it's been super hectic the past few weeks, but I will make sure Aunt gets back to you ASAP. Oh, thank you, Rebecca. Rebecca Mayer. Thank you so much. Rebecca or Rebecca Meyer, excuse me, or Mayer. Meyer Mayer. Uh, Rebecca says, Rebecca Romana here. Okay, forget what I said about Mayor Meyer. <laughs> Rebecca Romana here. <laughs> Gotta use my real name for email for my summer job, LOL gag. Love listening to your lives while I write while I write T-L-O-U fan fiction in my depression hovel of a room. You look lovely today. <laughs> Thank you. I, I also once had a depression hovel. I sort of lightened it up a little bit, and I think that helped me. I have a, a, a rule, like nothing too much. It's like very white and stark. Makes me feel clean and clear and under control. <laughs> but one day, this is like my depression hovel. You can't see it because it's the green screen, but I got all my all my things around me. So I relate to that. Rebecca Romana, I say this. It's not $5,000. It's not $2,000. <laughs> it's not $10,000. It's a lot of money. Yeah. That's, that's what I make every day. <laughs> that's how I describe my paychecks. Um, also, Rebecca, I say this. Look out. Medical medium's a cult. He said it. He's, he doesn't lie. He has God's voice. So there you go. What else? Well, what happened is they were using eggs back years and years ago to raise bugs. <laughs> so stay off the eggs. And finally, <laughs> you were like actually nervous. You were <laughs> nervous, weren't you? <laughs> okay, sorry. Thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, back to it. So she's like, I want you to, uh, talk to the spirit and do an RD and scan me and put me on a per perfect protocol and my breast will heal itself. Okay. With nothing invasive. So that's what her hope and dream is. She says that to him. Then the wife texts back. Oh, sorry. We're busy. Uh, in a couple weeks, I'll get back to you or we're, we've been busy for the past few weeks, but I'll sure aunt get back, gets back to you. William never texted her again. Okay, so when she says straight up, my goal and vision is that spirit and yourself, the medical medium, will RD me, I don't know what that is, will RD and scan me and will put me on a perfect protocol, which is like a blueberry in the morning and then a celery juice in the afternoon and then one sprinkle of you know Parmesan cheese. That's what he considers protocols. And my breast will heal itself with nothing invasive. And guess what he responds with? Nothing. Nothing. That's what I want answers for. She tells, she lays it out exactly what she's wanting from you. The reason why she's apprehensive for going to the doctor and doing all this stuff. She wants you to fix it. And he abandons her. Explain that to your followers. They're going to not give a shit anyways because they're determined to believe whatever this guy says. But that's what I'm like. She asks you for healing. Please heal me. And he ghosts her. It's fucked up. Uh, anyways, 
that's it. That was the last time that, uh, that they spoke. So there you go. We went through just test after test of radiation after radiation. Every kind of treatment on the planet she would never have wanted her entire life. She's trying she, to save her life. She finally left the hospital ravaged um, and was sent home. But it was like impossible, especially mm-hmm. like Steph didn't have, she had like real shitty insurance and no money and just like is different when you're in that situation and you're at a shitty hospital with shitty doctors, you know. Okay, and also, let's read this one. In December, Tassone's family, now aware of the lump, took her for a biopsy. Before the results came back, she had a seizure that centered the hospital. Doctors induced a coma for three days, and she learned that she would never walk much again. She had stage four metastatic breast cancer, which had eroded her spine. Okay, there you go. Eroded her spine. The cancer eroded her spine, not a dusty bed that he seems to want to really, really, really make you think like that was the reason. And he actually bought her a bed, so it fixed it. And then it says, they're assuming it's tumors, which is not smart as the radiation can cause problems, McCluskey texted her. McCluskey says she was echoing another Tassone friend's fear. Most of the friends who took care of Tassone after her cancer diagnosis had some tie to the medical medium world. In August 2018, one of them made a trip to the beach with her. She's, she always was hopeful, the friend says. William's disappearance hurt and confused her, but she kept faith that he had the answers. Her doctor told friends and family that they needed to be honest. He had been forthright about how much time she had left because she had waited too long, it seems. You know, she it had grown to fo- stage four already. Tassone responded by asking if someone could contact William to check. So even after he ghosts her, she's like, can somebody intervene and ask him if this, you know, prognosis is correct? So she still was believing even after she was abandoned by him. Uh, I'm always behind you, she once texted him. It's my purpose. In November 2018, Tassone died of breast cancer. She was 38 years old. Okay, so December, let's look at the timeline here for a second. When did she get, uh, she did the thermography scan in mid-November, and then I guess they did the, she asked for help, and she wanted him to scan her after that, I suppose, so sometime in 2017, presumably, he never texts her back, and then by 2018, November, so a year later, she's dead. So she did the, it sounds like from what they're saying, she did the, uh, you know, the can't, the traditional cancer treatment that last year and it didn't work because it was probably too far gone um and then it says in her final weeks the pain of william's absence lingered i don't want you i don't want to die can you please talk to anthony for me she texted mccluskey five days before her death maybe he will have a solution or something mccluskey responded that she was sorry she says she wasn't sure if the text was from tassone so five days before she's, she passes away, she's still desperately wanting medical medium advice and help. And guess what he does? Abandons her. That's what I, what, explain this. You had six out, you have six hours of content about this story specifically. You could answer that question in 30 seconds. And maybe it's in here, but I doubt it. Cause how can you, I was busy. I was busy, too busy like scamming people on Facebook live that I, ha- I couldn't heal this person that from my God given gift. <sighs> it's extremely saddening that Stephanie's worst fears came true because she didn't get the care that she needed for so long. <sighs> Despite AW's early attempts, encouraging her to go to the doctor and to be proactive. <sighs> Next, there is a really important point that needs to be addressed in the number one plotters. Original story. She had stated that AW told had told Stephanie that her breast lump could never become cancerous. That is incorrect. So I wish, I wish when she was staying with us and she first found that she had- And again, I don't remember that being in the article. So who cares what this person says? In her breast, I wish I had said to her, go get that checked. You definitely need to go get that checked. I mean, that's a big regret of mine. Like, why didn't I say that? Um, But she was so sure, you know, Anthony said, this isn't going to turn into anything. I'm not worried about it. And honestly, she was so- And here is an excerpt from that number one plotter's blog post that says, quote, at the time that she was living with us, Steph had recently found a small lump in her breast. She wasn't concerned, though. She told me that Anthony said it wasn't cancerous and it wouldn't turn into anything. 
We have already established that Stephanie did not discover her breast lump while temporarily staying nights with this plotter in early 2016. But instead, Stephanie discovered the breast lump a year later on March 6th of 2017. Anthony told her at this point to see a physician. He did not tell her that it could not become cancerous. However, here are recordings of the other plotters regurgitating the number one plotter's original false storyline from 2020. I guess she had told him before about this lump that she had in her breast, and he told her it was a cyst or that it was Epstein Barr, something like that, and that it was never going to turn into breast cancer. <clears throat> well, Seth had the BRCA2 gene. So, with the lump, did she, and even with, with the disc or whatever that was, did she ever see a doctor? Well, we're, I'm getting to that. Okay. The answer is no, answer is no because Anthony told her she lay flat. The answer is would, no because she trusted Anthony all along the way. Like, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. She or had already had a lump in her breast, and Anthony told her that it was nothing. Don't worry about it. It's just a cyst or something. Mm -hmm. So she didn't worry about it. You know, he told her multiple times that it wasn't cancer, and it was. He told her not to go get an MRI even after she was seizured and went into a coma. Again, Anthony never said that the breast lump could not or would not become cancerous. Anthony never told Stephanie not to get an MRI. He explicitly told Stephanie to get an MRI and supported Stephanie's doctor's recommendations for getting an MRI. Here is another excerpt from the number one plotter's original live from 2020. And if he did, and he told her at some point that this was never going to be cancerous, to me, that's pretty evil, right? Like, it's one thing to know information about somebody, and it's another to, like, lead them in completely the wrong direction, right? I'm referring to like when he told Steph like the lump in her breast was never going to turn cancerous. Someone asked. This is how false storylines spread and cause harm. It's true. And they have caused harm. One of the plotter's main claims is that they have caused harm to us. The fact that she died is inconsequential, but we have been harmed because he's not going to be able to publish his book right away. So much harm. Yeah, for you. Then he abandoned Stephanie at the end of her life. Okay, okay, all right. That's what I want to hear. Let's go back a little bit. Just 15 seconds. This is the part. I'm open-minded. I'm not going to judge in advance, okay, that, she, that, he was that he abandoned her. That's what I want to hear about. Cancer is someone else. This is how false storylines spread and cause harm. It's true, and they have caused harm. One of the plotter's main claims is that Anthony abandoned Stephanie at the end of her life. The last thing I would do is abandon Stephanie, but they have weaponized abandonment. It's a strategy they're using. It tugs on the heartstring. They've weaponized abandonment, bro. Abandonment is already uh, weaponized without any need to add any jizz to it. <laughs> like a little jizz, jizz to abandonment. I think that's already pretty nefarious to begin with. They're weaponizing abandonment. Abandonment's a pretty neutral thing to do to somebody. Uh, no. <laughs> Especially when they're dying of fucking cancer, you psychopath. They're weaponizing abandonment. My abandonment was a good thing. Okay. Okay. People who have been hurt before by someone else. So when they hear this, it hits everyone in the gut. If they have been betrayed, abused, or abandoned, they instantly get upset when they hear it. It's an emotion. So you can all, so only people who have been abandoned or abused before are upset by abandonment. So anyone who hasn't been understands that it's totally cool and good that what he did. Okay, that is quite the uh, mental gymnastics. <laughs> Psychological bait and switch. But it's not the reality of what actually happened. For those who really want to know, here's what really happened. My wife and I offered the Sony family through Stephanie's plotting caretaker up to $50,000 so that Stephanie could get the cancer care of her choice. Through the plotting caretaker, the one that you are you say is evil and had her worst intentions at heart for some reason, you are, you're not going to respond to her text anymore, but you're going to under the table, most likely secretly offer $50,000 as like hush money to not sue because this guy now has receipts of her, her developing a tumor over years of time and him not, you know, acting as a medical medium basically sending her to her grave, like, I mean, that might be dramatic, but that's what it seems like that he has evidence of. Like, she discovers it, and then she's dying through their texts and voice memos. 
So he's like, oh, here's $50,000. Why wouldn't she, why wouldn't he offer that to her? Directly. This guy's a fraud, man. If you, if you didn't think this guy was a fraud already, like you like, well, maybe he really believes it. No, you don't do that. Hold the family turned it down and wanted nothing to do with me and for me to stay away. And my mother was like, fuck Anthony. You know, obviously we're done with him. So I was in this very challenging place because they wanted her to have nothing more to do with him. Can we play that again? Oh my God. And my mother was like, fuck Anthony. Well, because now she probably came out and said, look, I've, I've been... I've been taking care of this cancer. I know I've known it was, you know, I've had this lump for two years now or whatever, or a year now. And I, this guy on my texting medical medium, he's been helping me. And now she, it's stage four and now she's going to die. And now they're like, fuck this guy. This is a reason why we're here. Why you didn't tell us why you like, we're late in the game now. I feel the same way. Like, fuck your hush money bullshit. Obviously we're done with him. So I was in this very challenging place. Because they wanted her to have nothing more to do with him. And remember, this is from the voice of the very person who was in charge of Stephanie's care at the time. I was told that the family, specifically Stephanie's brother, took Stephanie's phone away. And Stephanie was a prolific texter and audio messenger. Normally, nothing would stop her from reaching out very consistently, even when I hadn't had a chance to respond and then all of a sudden, communication completely stopped. <laughs> well, the brother in the article said he did not take away her phone at all. And according to the article, which the journalist looked at the text messages, presumably, said that he never responded to that last text where she said, I want you to do the protocol, scan on me, give me a thing, and heal me with spirit's help. That's what I, my goal is. And he didn't respond. Here is a recording from the plotters. Steph love to send audio recordings. Love to. Can we hear that one again too? Steph love to send audio recordings. Love to. Think about that. The plotters agree. Steph loved to send audio recordings. The article agrees that Steph was a prolific audio texter. She sent me and others hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of audio messages in the summer and fall of 2017. And suddenly, after she was diagnosed with cancer, she never sent me a single audio message again. An, uh, okay, no more audio messages, but a text message that he didn't respond to, which is a pretty clear cut uh, text message that was pretty like, help me, this is what I'm wanting from you, you to heal me. No response. Okay, now you want her to send her voice memos. Okay, and she's also now presumably told her family, now she has stage four cancer, she should have followed up for my healing. You know, it's like a, a job interview. You can't just like take the no, take the ignore. You got to go into the office. You got to ask in person. Something was preventing Steph from communicating with me. And I not only had to respect that, <laughs> but I wasn't sure who I would have been communicating with if I did. Oh, okay. So he's saying that, you know, the text message where she very clearly said what she wanted from him, which is what he promises people through his books and through his live streams and through his entire career. Uh, he didn't respond to that. And that's an excuse as to like, it must have been someone else communicating. And also, yes, she's dying. She had a year left to live. I did not abandon her. She was prevented from reaching out to me. And out of respect, I was honoring the family's wishes. No, no. The last text she sent got no response. She's saying, he's saying the way he's getting out of this legally, legally with like the, well, technically I wasn't lying. He, she, he, she never sent me a voice memo again. Okay, but why didn't you respond to her last text message? What the family told Stephanie, I do not know. And after Stephanie went to the hospital in December of 2017, she lived almost another year until November 13th, 2018. Stephanie deserves better than this. Better than the army of trolls screaming bloody murder. Oh no, not the music. She does deserve better than this. You know who has disparaged her memory the most? You and this fucking bitch on here as well. <laughs> Who's like your crony and brainwashed idiot. No offense. I mean... <laughs> 
That's how I feel. Like, girl, you're brainwashed. You're, you're his puppet. You are the mouthpiece. Let him stand on his own. He is a God-gifted man. Why are you interfering with this? Kissing his ass. Okay, now we're going to play the dramatic music because it's all really... The true victim in this is Anthony. A hate campaign brought on artificially by a small group of people mm. who want nothing more than to take down a health movement that is changing the world. No, it's not. It's this ruining people's lives. Situation. Watching Stephanie's name, memory, and legacy being trashed and exploited just for sport. I have been trying to protect Stephanie's memory <laughs> and to not exploit her. You've made six hours of content about this story, defending yourself, telling people embarrassing factoids about her last days, her last years, all the mistakes, the financial worry that she was in and her bathroom habits and the bed that was so old that she was sleeping on. Like, you don't find that to be the worst part of all this? All these years, even though I endured the hits of a false narrative. Being oh, he's endured the hits, guys. He's endured it all. Even though he said he's not releasing his book now because of the mean meanies. The mean haters stop me from working because I'm so sad about it. I'm so sad. I need my celery juice. I need my celery juice now. Mm, I endured though. Mm, I endured the hater trolls. My name is A. W. Whoopia. I'm on Whoopia, but I only drink celery juice. Fuck you. God. Around the global health communities, my team fought very hard to protect Stephanie's name and memory. No, you didn't. <laughs> what would Stephanie have wanted? Does anybody know? Yes, because she texted it to you. Heal me with the protocols. Ask the spirit that's in your ear to fix my problems. But we all know, if you're a logical human being, that this is bullshit. He doesn't have a special gift. He's a grifter like everyone else. He just wants money from you. He wants money from vulnerable people. Does anyone know? Yes, she clearly spelled it out for you. But you're a fraud and you have no talent and you have nothing to offer the world other than slimy, scammy tactics, and you have blood on your hands, literally. Dude. We hope someday everybody will just let Stephanie rest in peace. <laughs> will you? Again, this is an hour and 41 minutes. Can you let, let her rest in peace? This is the fourth podcast that you've done about her, defending yourself making her look bad. Ugh, sorry. Thanks, Glenn Doyle. <laughs> Thank you. Glenn Doyle says, Anthony, open your mouth when you talk. Guys, this has been really hard for me specifically and no one else in this story. The plotting plotters have plotted the plot and I've been the recipient of that. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Protect the underdog from the bullies that lurk the night. God. That he's the underdog that's lurk that's around at night. Also, what's this? We're talking about something awful, terrible, the unimaginable. That's what this podcast was. And finally. It hurts. It stings. Again, yeah. The Netflix documentary that may or may not be coming. I think that is what he is preemptively trying to get ahead of, so it seems. Maybe there is a documentary coming. I would watch it, obviously. I'll be in it, like I said. Call me, please. Call me, please. I will be in it. I have no authority. I have no inside information, but I have listened to his craziness, so I can give some perspective, <laughs> some biased perspective. Thanks, Glenn. Okay, we're almost there. Who really knew what she wanted? Well, she made it pretty clear to me. So now it's just the final music send off. Okay, there you go. That's the story. 
Lordy, lordy, that was rough. Um, so that's the last uh, podcast he's posted. Uh, this one was on, what's the date, does it say? May 5th. So it's been a while. He was posting more often before that. He did, um, oh, that's not true. October, just October, October, November. And then not for a while, unless he deleted some. Then it was, eight, no, I guess that's 35. April, so he took a big break. April, April, April. So he came back essentially. So, okay, so November 2022, he talks about body swelling, fluid retention, enema, lymphedema, tissue expansion. And then does not post till April, which is the plot to take down the medical medium. I wonder if he's had some legal issues. I don't know. Or if he was worried that he was going to have some legal issues. So he shut up for a while, at least in the podcast. It's interesting. Um, Do you guys want to listen to the second one? We never, I listened to this on my own, but we never listened to it. It talks about his bullying, that he wasn't really bullied as a kid. (laughs) He wasn't really bullied as a kid. He was, that was a made up story that the, one of the plotting plotters um, came up with. <laughs> and he's like, I think she got it from Elf. <laughs> and then once I heard that, I was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> but let's listen to it. We don't have to listen to the whole thing. Perhaps we'll see. But this is, so we listened to podcast or the episode one, which was the plot to take down the medical medium, which was a nothing burger. As they say, like nothing was included in that basically. Like it was like, oh, we have, we recorded this legally and we have tons of stuff. We have so much stuff we're going to play. It's crazy. We are going to play so much stuff. It's like, okay, when is it coming? Because we're at the end of the podcast and I've heard nothing yet. So this is the second one. This is supposed to be where all the real tea gets dropped. So we'll see. I have a guest with me today. She uncovered a plot by a group of rivals to take down medical medium and our community. To be safe, she chose to record the calls legally. To be safe. And they were caught red-handed. We're talking about the plot. A group of rivals planned in a premeditative way (gasps) to take down medical medium and the community. Make it go away. Go away. Take it all down. (gasps) But they got caught. Caught red-handed. No. They got found out. If they didn't, no one would be the wiser. (gasps) Never before has this ever happened in a health and wellness space. When you listen to the (gasps) plot, your jaw may hit the floor. (gasps) Strap yourself in for episode two. Get ready for the next round of the plotter's recordings. Get this guy off the internet. First chop at the tree. Parting of the Red Seas. Uh, Take him down. Take the scale. Multiple steps. You can't be down. Step one in this process. There's no coming back from that. When I just hear those again. None of that was relevant in any way. Parting of the Red Seas. What does that mean? (laughs) Give me context. I don't understand what the frick you're talking about. Intentions behind them. I mean, I'm still in shock, first of all, but you can feel the negative energy and the sense of their goals and the more recordings we hear unity i'm sure appreciates Kitty. you bringing this to light sorry and um down this guy off the inter- tensions behind them she I mean, skipped ahead you, i'm still in shock first of all but you can feel the negative energy and the sense of their goals and the more recordings we hear the more is uncovered it's bone chilling Back with me on the I'm Medical Medium chilling. podcast is Amber Vizicaro, who the Medical Medium community okay. is Amber calling Vizicaro. our hero right now. I'm honored to have you here, Amber. Today, we're going to go through some more recordings that were obtained legally. And of these anonymous sources who are actually plotting the takedown of the medical medium and the medical medium community. And here when she is. I say that, I mean, I, I just can't believe what they were doing. But the facts are there. The information's there. And the recordings are there undeniable God. and it's just it's I'm just unbelievable sending. for the people who haven't heard the last episode if you can and you have a moment try to catch up and listen to 35 episode 35 part one plot to take down the medical there media. was nothing in it amber first can you give us a little recap on some of your recordings from the last episode of course in part one of course we talked about how Captain. there was an attempt to indoctrinate me into a group a group of people with Girl, health and wellness businesses you're that already. have plotted a premeditated plan to go to a journalist at a mainstream media outlet with a manipulated story that would, if all went according to their plan, cause so much upset that the medical medium community would all come crashing down. I hope so. We can all hope, right? Okay. This is an example of her other um, 
content, this uh, soldier of medical medium in the egg wars, probably. She was drafted in the egg wars, and now she's remained a uh, guardsman in the celery solution. I don't know. Um, okay, this is, she's someone called Healing Parkinson's liked it, so that's always a good sign. Um, this is her talking about Gwyneth Paltrow. Recently shared her wellness routine on a podcast episode with a well-known functional medicine practitioner, and it's getting a lot of backlash. She fasts for 16 hours a day. Your body needs continual energy and nutrients to function. When you're depriving your body of that, the adrenal glands will flood the body with adrenaline, which is meant to be a temporary problem solver, but not a long-term solution. The only reason why anybody... F and she knows that because medical medium told her. Here's another one, just so we get a, an idea of who this is. Um, acne healing smoothie. Actually, no. Here's her talking about medical medium. I have full body chills as I'm reading every word in the pages of these books. Seek a doctor. <laughs> medical medium's like, go see a doctor now if you have chills, okay? <laughs> I'm not doing this again. I, if you read my book and get chills, seek medical attention. I am not a practitioner. There's nothing like this that has ever existed on the face of the planet and these brain saver books by medical medium anthony william are being released during a time in which we are experiencing the most severe epidemic of mental illness and neurological illness that we've ever seen okay so everyone's got mental illness eat a blueberry <laughs> everybody and their mother you may have noticed is being diagnosed with anxiety with panic attacks with depression with ocd with adhd with autism with eating disorders with gastroparesis the list goes on and on and on and, and now this man with no medical training is going to what now there's so much noise out there. There's so many so-called experts and doctors and practitioners claiming to have answers and to be- Yeah, like in this book that I have right here. Yeah, exactly what I'm just saying right there. Able to help people with mental health and neurological health. And then they can have sometimes fancy scans and diagnostic tools. But then when you really boil it down to the solutions that are actually being offered, it's, oh, you need more protein. You need breath work. You need to take some magnesium or some fish oil which is the biggest insult to all of the people who have really suffered in their lives who are dealing with seizure disorders. So instead drink a celery juice and eat a, ban eat a banana and a potato, but no eggs? <laughs> Did she not hear herself? Like how is this guy any different than what you're describing as a horrible thing? And extreme, can't get out of bed because they're dealing with so much fatigue and encephalitis. And they're sleeping on the floor in a dusty room. <sighs> and they've tried God. all the things and it hasn't given them relief because it's not real answers. So it's not real answers like this real answer. I am here to tell you that there are answers and real healing does exist. And medical medium has already helped millions of people around the world heal from this so-called incurable. And these brain saver books are advanced <laughs> medical textbooks that they're advanced medical textbooks. Why in the world would anyone think that talking to Anthony William would cure them of cancer? Because, well, he wrote an advanced medical textbook. Amber, scamber. Come on. Are completely revolutionary. Uh-huh. And these books and this information go so much further than just the physical. So something that medical medium has brought to light is that the soul resides in the brain. So we are being there's, there's something I call bullshitting yourself. That's all I have to say. The soul's in the brain. Medical medium told me. Okay, okay. Systematically poisoned by physical substances that ultimately affect the nervous system, including the brain. This makes us spiritually vulnerable. And this comp Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. It's the brain juice. It's not that things are going on in everyone's lives and everyone has an individual story and issues we're working on every day, need therapy. No, it's just the brain juice. Compromises our intuition. So these books contain real answers, not just for healing the physical body and getting you out of physical suffering, but it's also about providing 
mental, emotional, and spiritual support and healing the soul. So something that's really cool if you're somebody who is like, I want all of the information, I want to take it all in, each of these books contains about 600 pages, okay? Of nonsense. There's a whole chapter about him healing cars as a child, that he went to the car mechanics and there was a mystery like that was going on where the they couldn't figure out uh, these, you know, these very skilled mechanics couldn't figure out that this uh, carburetor was not working, but Anthony William knew because the spirit told him what was wrong with the car. That's the, the information you can you can look forward to in this piece of crap, a waste of cutting down a tree. Can you tell I'm angry? Can you tell I'm angry, guys? Can you tell I'm pissy, pissed off today? So we're talking 1,200 pages of information that you've never heard. Yeah, that's true. You ain't never heard this these wacko theories <laughs> before, which is unbelievable. And then if you're somebody who's like, I'm overwhelmed, I just don't have the capacity to take in information like that right now, what you can do is just make it up because it's going to help you just as much as the information will. Is first of all, there are all of these new, so many new recipes for healing meals that have never been posted, never been published before. They're completely new and they all look delicious. So you can flip through those and just start making those recipes. And then there's this new thing. Revolutionary. That is French fries. Green shot therapy. So these fries and dipping sauce. Simple, wow. easy to make juice shot recipes with very specific. You ever wanted to heal your OCD? French fries with ketchup. <laughs> the solution that's never been reported anywhere before. God. Specific, <sighs> acute ingredients <sighs> for very specific exposures, conditions, and usages. So there is an, uh, an EMF exposure, brain shot therapy. <laughs> There is a brain shot therapy for dealing with chemical exposure if you're somebody who's chemically sensitive. It's just like, get people to freak out, make them afraid of the sky, make them afraid of their microwave, make them afraid of the Wi-Fi, make them afraid of everything, and then give them a solution that is, you know, in this secret healing book. It's a good, it's a good sales tactic. Sensitive, and you really get knocked down when you get exposures that you can't control. There's brain shot therapy for that. There's a brain shot therapy for mold exposure. There's a brain shot therapy for shifting your energy levels if you're dealing with fatigue. There is brain shot therapy for shifting you out of your ego if you feel like you're ego driven. Shooting, okay. I'm ego driven, here's a brain shot therapy. Okay, but I, I accidentally took the ADD brain shot therapy. Oh, God, I took the wrong one. It was two blueberries, not four. There is a brain shot therapy for toxic heavy metal exposure. There's brain shot therapy for helping to support you in getting out of fight or flight in the moment. And there are so many more. It's, it's a plethora. So you can- It's a cure-all. But then definitely go to a doctor. <laughs> you can just use these quick and simple and easy to make recipes for fast relief. And that can help to open up your capacity to take in more of the information and more of the protocols. And I will huh? tell you, I've already spoken to so many people around the world who have tried these brain shot therapy recipes who have noticed immediate relief, immediate improvement. Um, so you definitely have to get your hands on these books. If you can't afford them, then go to your local library, check them out for free from the library. And if you can't find them in your local library, then stay tuned because I'm going to be doing a giveaway on my feed. So in some way... If you can't find them in your local library, like and follow my page, share with 10 friends, indoctrinate them, and then you might have a chance to win one. My shape or form, we've got to get these books in your hands. Okay, so that's who we're dealing with, just FYI. Once again, that's who's speaking in this podcast. And in the process, they're exploiting a deceased person, shaping a story that they want to, the way that they want to spin it, leaving out facts and content cherry picking evidence that suits a preferred narrative with a plan of publishing additional articles and ultimately to sell a negative documentary. And how we talked about how I obtained legal recordings of these phone conversations. Did you? 
versus like when the the movie came out or the doc or the Netflix thing came out. Like this is it's gonna happen. Holy shit! There's gonna be a documentary about it all. That's our vision. I mean, it's not gonna be first get the publish the article, and then once the article is published, then people start bidding on the piece. The intention that Ash and I had is that it's going as、uh, a Netflix series like Bad Vegan will be made by Anthony Bourdain. And it will be a fucking hit because what he pulled off is unbelievable. I mean, and the celebrity angle, like this thing, this Netflix version is going to go bonkers. I, mean, I connected with a lot of people too. He really appreciated Ash and I, and then just gave him a lot of direction for this piece. We gave him a lot of clarity. Sort of like he was having he was having a hard time wrapping his head around a lot of it. He had to like really hammer it in his head, like what's going on, and, and like explain the details and point him towards this, point him towards that. But I, I was upset. I said, like. He, it, you are scared. You're scared. Like, what's going on? What's the delay? Like, you, I, you have everything. It's on the fucking phone. Like, you have all this stuff. Like, what more do you need?、Mm-hmm. And then I, I basically threaten him. I will definitely take responsibility for one. Of, I've been one of the people. I think he's scared too. Honestly, this craziness, six-hour podcast episodes, collectively, that's a fear-based decision. I believe. For this,、uh, if, if you want to take the, the list of people of why this article is coming out and why it's coming out in a.、Um, Mainstream publication is number one. Ash is number one responsible. I would be number two. Would be number three. Would be number four. It was us four who like decided this needs to happen. So this is what this group of plotters did to sell a story, to sell their narrative. They had to hammer it into the head of a journalist, point him here and point him there, and ultimately threaten him. And today I'm going to unpack more of the content from the calls that I had with these plotters. As part of the attempt that they had to recruit me, get to it. That really speaks to a serious lack of credibility in each of them as sources. And had given me seeds. She planted seeds that I had not heard when I saw the documentary. And then when I saw the documentary and I flipped, that's when I started collecting way more information. I went back. To I asked for more. First of all, I want to point out here that this plotter is stating in his own words that what ultimately tur- what turned him against medical medium. Wasn't a story. It wasn't a piece of information about a deceased person. It was him watching a documentary that a co-plotter's husband helped to create, which made him think to himself. They're talking about Bad Vegan. If you are familiar with that on Netflix, it's a documentary about a woman who, like, got caught up with this guy on Twitter that she was in love with that promised her that she, he could heal her dog, and she owned a really famous New York vegan restaurant. And then there was like a you know a thing about money that she was the guy was stealing money from her and they were on the run and they weren't paying the people at the restaurant and it was a whole thing and、um, the dude went to prison and then she was like still in love with him though it's like a crazy story if you have time to watch I I enjoyed it I forget some of the details but that's apparently one of these people the plotter's husband was a camera guy on that documentary allegedly. What this ha- has to do with this, I don't know. Other than like, it would be wonderful to have a Netflix documentary about the medical medium scam. And I totally agree. So like, I don't know. They're saying that the fact that they want a documentary made about this is somehow like a tragic blow to medical medium and means that they're evil. I guess that could be Anthony. That was his light bulb moment. Next, he <laughs> says he turned to a source that he deems as being reliable. Who made him so confident that medical medium was problematic that he became the number two instigator of this entire takedown plot? I mean, she,、uh, <laughs> is like a CIA agent. I mean, this and she'll be happy to talk to you, Amber. You can talk to anybody you want. Couldn't hear anything. Just be censoring what? We can't even hear anything. What? There's no name. No, we don't know the context of what you're saying.、It's、beep, beep, beep, beep. Okay, am I supposed to get glean something from that? But she like. Went and found pictures of him in his high school yearbook. <laughs> Can I hear that one again? I mean, she,、uh, <laughs> is like a CIA agent. I mean, this and she'll be happy to talk to you, Amber. You can talk to anybody you want in this story. But she like went and found pictures of him in his high school yearbook. <laughs> That sounds like something I would do. <laughs> I was looking for him as a child because there's no age until the Vanity Fair article came out. It, it was said that he was like in his twenties, which is so ridiculous. And you, I knew he had a wife. I looked that up in the court records, but like that is kind of the level of investigative reporting and journalism that I find 
totally fine, <laughs> personally. You're a public figure with a very sketchy background where you claim that teachers at your school were all in shock and awe that when you were in elementary school, you were t you know healing their uh, medical issues. So can we go talk to those you know elementary school teachers? No, because he's not even going to say where he lived. He's not even going to say how old he is. So you have no information. It's very vague on purpose. So you can't corroborate anything that he says about his backstory. I find nothing wrong with it. So that sounds like the plotters or are looking for anything they can find. I guess they're in my yearbook looking for pictures. And I heard CIA agent. So I guess there must be something these plotters are doing. <laughs> so... And when I even think back to the other clips you you played for us, there were <laughs> four people. God. They had like a ranking system. <laughs> so it was like one, two, three, four. And they brought this plot to the media company. I, that's what it looks like too through all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's how it, works, it was inspired by a husband who actually does cinematography. Uh -huh. Meaning yes. that was involved. Okay. And I'm just so blown away in a sense where I'm, I'm actually in shock. In shock, so. But really, I was just a seeker of truth, like you are. <clears throat> I just wanted to know the truth, so I was surprised. He talked to me on the phone, and we talked for a good long time. But one of the stories he told me, I have no idea why. I don't remember why our conversation went here, but I think this is the underlying thing for Anthony all the time, is that... Um, Hi. I think in his childhood, growing up in, in Maine, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a different world, um, especially back then. Oh, um, in Maine. And okay, I'll write that down, everybody. <laughs> Let's go investigate. <laughs> he probably didn't fit in. I think the kids picked on him a lot. He was mentioning stuff that how the boys, um, when he was, he had a little job after work, after school, like a little work job, and he was walking home, and they set up, it was wintertime, and they set up a, a snow um trap i don't know what to call it <laughs> whereas when he walked by a certain spot they all bombarded him with snowballs mm -hmm. and he's still telling this story to this day to me <laughs> so apparently it hurt him a lot both physically and mentally i think he was like bloody and bleeding and mm -hmm. you know you have to go home and explain to your mom why why you're all beat up but i think that was a common thing that the kids were mean to him so um i don't know Maybe he snapped. I don't know. He just has this strong will to feel important. And that's what I say to kind of mm -hmm. get back at everyone, you know, to be something really special. So, okay. So that was, she said she talked to him on the phone. He told her a story about when I was a kid, I got bullied and whatever. And that she's inferring there and insinuating that, well, maybe because he was bullied so much as a kid that that's why he's doing these things the way he is making up these stories and trying to make himself making himself seem like he's got a special gift when in reality he's just a regular dude. Like, he's pretty normal. I, again, like, why would God choose him specifically? Like, you know? Like, there ain't much special about this dude. He's a normal dude. He's got a ponytail. That's about the only interesting part of this guy. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so he's going to defend himself against the haters that's, that think that he was bullied as a child. Okay, here it comes. Here we are again. This is, this is somebody who this group is relying on for so-called factual information that ultimately the journalist ends up relying on for factual information. And, and we have again the truth seeker phrase, truth seeker, truth seeker. And I want to talk about this so-called truth. Anthony, is this, is this a story that you shared with this woman? I haven't experienced a childhood experience like that. So I'm, you know, confused about that. That seems like the story from the movie Elf, where Buddy and Michael were in Central Park and they got attacked by some kids and some bullies. And that's what it reminds me of. Ow! Son of a nutcracker! <laughs> and he's still telling the story to this day, to me. So if I hear that, <laughs> like, was that important <laughs> to put in there? He's like, I've never been bullied. That sounds like a, a, a movie in which a child was being hit and a adult elf was being hit by snowballs. <laughs> Let's play the scene there. <laughs> so bizarre. Correctly, that recording. Oh, She's saying, oh, 
yeah. I'm still telling that same snowball fight story today, or maybe the other day, or it sounds like now I'm still telling that person the story, but I haven't talked to this person in years. Um, I don't know. Maybe he snapped. I don't know. He just has this strong will to feel important. And that's what I say to kind of get back at everyone, you know, to be something really special. And I really don't think it's spirit. I think he, I think he has a mental disorder, actually, because there's so many things that are signals for that. Maybe he really does think he hears voices, you know? There's a lot of people, people with schizophrenia out there, and they think they hear voices as well. Yeah, I don't know. But not necessarily bad ones. Basically, this woman doesn't believe in your gift, which is fine, right, to each their own. But she's filling in that gap by diagnosing you as if she's a psychiatrist when she's not. Based on, <laughs> they're so upset. Like all she said was, "He told me a story one time about him getting bullied." <laughs> what did she think? She's a psychiatrist. Okay, stories that you never actually told her. <laughs> and one major theme that I observe from these recordings is that several Good people point. in this group weaponize the fact that they've ever spoken to you personally at all, even if you were not actually close to them in reality, and they use it as leverage to position themselves as people who have insider information to recruit others and as a marker of credibility to say whatever they want about you in general. Right, okay. So we know talked to a lot of people um, and gathered all kinds of information. He has a shit ton from Here this plotter is saying that the journalist that they sought out for this mainstream media article got a ton of his information from this woman. And I'm not exactly sure that she sounds like a reliable source, to say the least. You know, like, when he woke up from the coma, did they, was he, did, is, he, is he mentally disturbed? Does he actually think he hears a voice? Um, I mean, are these people who do, like, fucking crazy sacrifices? Of, like, I don't even know. Like, who knows? Like, I, I, like, are they acting like they're Christian, but they're really killing little babies? Like, I don't fucking know. Like, I, it, it's crazy. So this guy is plotting a plan <laughs> with a group of people. Agree. He's plotting a plan. He's planning a plot, and he's also plotting a plot. The plotters. <laughs> they've taken it to a major <laughs> mainstream media outlet, and at the same time, they're plotting. They're associating me with sacrificing babies or killing babies, while they're Oops. being anonymous sources. <sighs> and yeah, this is this is amazing, actually. But there's like no one more trustworthy than Robbie. <laughs> so I know that whatever he shared with you is like spot on. Can we hear that one again? But there's yeah. like no one more trustworthy than Robbie. <laughs> so I know that whatever he shared with you is like spot on. The most trustworthy. That was really interesting to me. Is that what we're calling someone who's making up horrifying allegations of sacrificing and killing babies? Okay, I missed something there with the sacrificing babies thing. I don't know. Should I, I don't want to go back, but like I kind of like brushed it off of like, okay, this is just a thing. And now they're going to like double down on it. Like we didn't sacrifice babies. We didn't. Okay. That is ridiculous. It's like, oh, I, did, I don't think they're actually saying that though. But I got to go back. I'm fortunately. Me with sacrificing. Okay. Here's a list that they sought out for this mainstream media article got a ton of his information from this woman. And I'm not exactly sure that she sounds like a reliable source, to say the least. You know, like, when he woke up from the coma, did they, was he, did, is, he, is he mentally disturbed? Does he... Oh, yeah, because Medical Medium, according to the article, claimed that he was in a coma because he, like, smelled chemicals one time, and he's so sensitive to chemicals that he was in a coma or something. So I think that's what he's referencing here. Okay. I think he hears a voice. Um, I mean... Are these people who do like fucking crazy sacrifices? Of, like, I don't even know. Like, who knows? Like, I, I, like, are they acting like they're Christian, but they're really killing little babies? Like, I don't fucking know. Like, I, it, it's crazy. I don't, that's totally taken out of context. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. There's a beep bleep in the middle of it. He's, it doesn't sound serious to me, but now we're going to act like as if this is a real accusation that they made. And again, this did not make it into the article at all. So who cares? So this guy is plotting a plan. <laughs> with a group of people. He's putting a, a plot. Plotters. They've taken it to a major mainstream media outlet. And at the major. same time, they're plotting. They're associating me with sacrificing babies <laughs> or killing babies. 
while they're being anonymous sources. <laughs> and yeah, this is this is amazing, actually. But there's like so no amazing. one more trustworthy than Robbie. <laughs> so <laughs> I know that whatever he shared with you is like spot on. Can we hear that one again? Oh but there's God. like no one more trustworthy than Robbie. <laughs> so <laughs> I know that whatever he shared with you is like spot on. The most trustworthy. That was really interesting to me. Is that what we're calling someone who's making up horrifying allegations of sacrificing and killing babies? That's not what it sounded like to me. I would, if, if that was the allegation, he said it way too lightly. Who completely hid this sinister plot from me for over a year and who plotted behind your back, Anthony. The pl you hid the plot of you recording this for him to listen to every night. That's who is the real plotter here. Amber, scamber, and behind everyone's back. Well, I'm so glad you're on the team of the good guys. <laughs> at least, I don't know about good, but at least honest. <laughs> We've got a mix, but at least we're trying to be honest about it. Is it possible to hear that one again? I'm so glad you're on the team of the good guys. <laughs> at least, I don't know about good, but at least honest. <laughs> this is why this has taken six hours. At least we're trying to be honest about it. Throughout these recordings, the plotters contradict themselves a lot like this. Here, it's at first, at first it's we're the good guys. And then, well, I don't know about good, but at least honest. And then she says, it's, well, we're trying to be honest. This is who was named as the number one source. And she's here contradicting herself again and again as she's referring to herself and her fellow colluders. Anthony, that's not even his real name, by the way. I'm not sure if you know that. It's not? Um, it's not. No, it's not. What is it? Um, I don't even know. I don't care anymore. <laughs> that's not his real name, though. This plotter was so confident in the negative things that she was saying, so confident in saying that Anthony is not your real name, and yet she doesn't actually know what it is. She doesn't know. She doesn't care. It's like she can't even be bothered to get her information straight before spreading rumors. Anthony, that's not even his real name, by the way. I'm not sure if you know that. It's not? Um, it's not. No, it's not. What is it? Um, I don't even know. His real name, I believe, is Anthony Covello, or Cov Covilio, and his he changed it to Anthony William for some unknown reason, I suppose. I think his name is Anthony, though, but maybe not. Maybe it could be his middle name. I have no idea. I don't care anymore. <laughs> that's not his real name, though. Okay, so that's not my real name I'm hearing. The in interesting part is the person doesn't even care to even know, but this person is a source that's supposed to be relied upon. When I was growing up, no one could pronounce my last name right. And so my school teachers and other people would call me Anthony William. And Anthony <laughs> William is my legal name. That is my real name. My real name's Anthony. And so when I hear that, it sounds like my name, Anthony, is not even my real name. So if that rumor is going around, I could see people being like, whoa, that's not even his real name, but it's Anthony William. That's my real name. And that's what I go by. And so, and there's nothing wrong with trying to maintain a little bit of privacy too. But my name is not hidden by any means. My last name's not hidden at all. It's easy to find. <laughs> it's like the weirdest way to say, yeah, she's right. But like, also my legal name is Anthony William now because I changed it. Like, he's like, it's not hard to find. Like my name is hard to pronounce and therefore my parents call me it too. It's like, you're, it's like 17 sentences for one point. Deny it or not. Lord, I think he's, he's denying it, but he's not at the same time. Not as if it's being hidden, but throughout my life, my family has exactly. called me Anthony William. My mom calls me Anthony William, even up to this point now, today. And that is my legal name. And Anthony is my first yeah. legal name, too. Yeah, I believe, and I'm not sure, but I believe he had some legal issues in the past with, like, some money stuff and, I don't know, something, I believe. So maybe he's trying to avoid people being able to search his court records. That makes sense to me. Throughout these recordings, I found that this group often conflated privacy with dishonesty. They're acting like you're deceiving people when Anthony William is your actual legal first name and middle name. Your last name is out there. Like you said, you're not hiding it.
Okay, so it's his, it is so William is his first name then probably his real first name then Anthony's his middle name and then Covelio is his uh actual last name. Okay, so he swipped it swapped it up. It sounds like nothing wrong with wanting to maintain some privacy. Meanwhile, these plotters didn't want anyone to know what they've been up to and what they've been doing. I'm not I'm not afraid of Anthony. Um I'm being strategic. She's the, the, this Amber Scamber, she's the one that has been the most deceptive by recording everybody and secretly giving, all, like, she had no intentions to leave Anthony's, you know, warm embrace and uh, participate in this takedown. So she's the one who's been the most deceptive out of everybody. These people are, like, being honest about their, you know, oh, I, we don't like them. We want to do this article. We want to do this documentary. This is our intentions. Like, we don't like that what happened. Da, da, da. Okay, she's like, wow, that's amazing. I'm so on board with this. This is so crazy and great. Okay, meanwhile, she's taking all of this recorded stuff to Anthony for intel. So you're the, the plotter here. They don't see, like, they, ugh. It's, it's crazy that you can't see that, Amber. I mean, I thought about when I talked to well, do you want to be off the record, on background? Like, what do you want to do here? And the truth is, I, I, I would be happy to be on the record and just like say, oh, Robbie said that. But the, the, the strategic reason behind that, that's not smart because I'm, I have a different, I, I'm, I'm building something different with my life. And I don't want to be associated with this, with this in any way, shape, or form. I want to just completely distance myself and be gone. Mm-hmm. I will not be in the documentary. My name will not be in the article. I'm, I'm just leaving. That's tragic in so many ways. So I'm speechless in the moment when I hear that because what that plotter is doing is telling a journalist, whatever they want to tell them, going anonymous, the person's not afraid of me. The person just doesn't want to be involved on any level after the, basically the bomb is dropped and, and a documentary happens because that's part of the plotter's plan altogether. The plotter's but plan. This person works publish. in the health space is a business owner or works in, in business in the health space. And here that person is basically plotting to plan or strategically plotting to plan, plotting to plan <clears throat> the takedown of medical medium and the community. The journalist is allowing it. That's a whole nother story. And to unpack this, I mean, I could sit here, we can sit here and unpack this for a long time, but I know we have to move on. There's so much more. But this is a person working in the health space, competitor, rival, whatever you want to say, a plotter with a group of people, directing a journalist, staying anonymous, going on the merry way to keep doing what they're doing in the health space, in the health field, not having their name attached to anything, and they're not afraid of me at the same time. And all this is perfectly fine to the journalist, perfectly fine, obviously, to the media company. Mm -hmm. I find it despicable. Great. Like, he's really... He's really easygoing, and if you say to him, like, I want to talk on background, um, or I want to talk off the record, or however you want to do it, if you say, I don't want you to quote me, mm-hmm. or say it, you, like, you know, put my name anywhere, he's happy to do that, and he's also, like, he'll change your name if you want, you know, a particular statement to be said, but you want to use a different name. You know, just make sure you are upfront about anonymity you know do you want your name mentioned or not be sure you say clearly what you want Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and my recommendation for that you know what that is is to not Mm -hmm. don't go there um you know you don't want to be sued for any kind of defamation of character so on these recordings i'm pretty sure that what is being described here is not how real journalism is supposed to be (laughs) conducted and yeah, you would know. one of these plotters is clearly aware that what she's saying is most likely defamatory. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah, if that was it. Yeah. I, when people are afraid of being uh, law, uh, sued for, you know, defamatory statements that they made, um, defamation, whatever. Nine times out of 10, no, 99.9% of the time, that is not going to hold weight in court. It will not. And that does not stop you know, celebrities from, you know, slapping people with lawsuits all the time. It's not because, oh, she knows, like, she's afraid of it because she knows it's a lie. It's like, no, that's common practice for people to try to silence any sort of critics against them. She's going to go after you, but she's not going to put her name behind it. It sounds like she's not confident in what she's saying and concerned that what she's saying might not be true. 
And some of these sources won't put their names behind their statements because they admittedly don't completely stand behind their statements. So if he had if he had picked something out that was like, yes, like I stand by that statement, like 1000 percent every single moment of my life, like I'd be, I would have been like, yeah, you can use my name. But the, the things that he asked me to go on record were like not things that I um, I was just like, eh, I don't I mean, I said that but that's not really like something that I feel like super strongly about that feels important to have my name behind it so I ended up saying no and he was very kind about it I mean he asked me to explain why and I did but he didn't like push me about it at all so that's a major red flag to me I think that that sounds like something the journalist something that the journalist should have pushed her on if she doesn't feel comfortable with what she said she shouldn't have it in print the fact that the journalist knows that she doesn't even fully stand behind what she said to me that shouldn't even go in an article then I really okay. don't even know what to say about this. <laughs> when know. you Me unpack either. this one, the person doesn't feel comfortable standing behind their statement, that alone, right? And then the person isn't even a thousand percent confident. The statement is not just stand viable, but can even be seen. The person wants to be anonymous in the back end, but that, but the yet isn't standing behind the statements, doesn't want them out front on record. Yeah, I don't know. This I ain't buying this. It's like, yeah, people don't want their name out there because he's got insane followers. Like I said, like some of my videos that I post about medical medium, I get the most like hate comments or people are like, you're the worst person and this is life-saving advice. Blah, blah, blah. And they get like very upset. You know, they send like essays of comments. You're like, okay, you know, like, are you unstable and able to, you know, recognize that this is someone's opinion and it's a video on the internet and I'm not trying to kill your messiah, you know, but I don't know. People don't really click it together sometimes. So yeah, I, you know, I would probably go on record because like, yeah, I feel like it's important if you're going to stand behind it, stand behind it, but it doesn't mean that that is like, I'm lying, <laughs> you know, like that's why I don't want to, I want to talk on background. I mean, that's pretty common practice in journalism to give someone information on background. Journalist seems to be fine with it. I mean, it just seems like a weaponization of some kind. It's almost like just fit anything in. Oh, you want to be in the back end? Then fine. You don't have to stand behind these comments. We'll put them in the article. But which don't comment worry, specifically? We won't say your name. Say your name. Maybe they'll even change a name. Of course, put a fake name. It's a type of wordsmithing. Like your own. <laughs> for sure. It and they do this. Like Aren't people allowed some privacy? Exactly. <laughs> Aren't people allowed some privacy, uh, but they should still be able to say what they want to say? No? Okay. Only for him. Think God's to make favorite. make the reader feel any way they want them to feel. And they kind of put what they want to put in, even if the person isn't standing behind it. And this should be the bigger story because this is, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, this is unconsciousable. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's... It's not a natural situation. It's not a natural story. It seems as though these people don't know much of the story or they don't feel comfortable standing by their own statements. And there's some misinformation mixed in. And then you've got a journalist listening as if this stuff is all, you know, real. It's it's kind of like a favoring of the plotted plan. And it's plotted it's plan. that falls in the line of, I mean, some character assassination territory. It's like you can keep, you can take sources that are filled with misinformation and then you can weaponize it like you said you can slip in a fact or two somewhere around it and then you make it as if it's law or complete truth and uh it's really interesting it's it's it seems like it's a way of telling the story the way that they right. want the reader to read it and so obviously i had some questions about all of this as i was listening to to this group of individuals i was trying to figure it all out i really truly was not asking a huge amount of questions i was mostly just trying to hear these people out as you can hear in the recordings that we're sharing mm -hmm. but it was interesting to me that throughout this process they quickly became uncomfortable with me asking questions at all you might oops you might want to probably because they were on to you because you're recording this secretly and you're like what did you say did you say that medical medium is a loser liar can you repeat that please i'm mean, i just i didn't hear it can you can you play that back for me and they're like what are you asking this for what do you want me to it's like trying to like uh, entrap somebody probably oops hello what happened what the hark <laughs> What 
the heck happened? 2636. Okay, let me go back in. Hold on. I clicked something and now it's broken. <sighs> okay, because I went like this. Back. Play. I have a guess. Okay, I was at 26. Out, as you can yeah, hear sorry. in the recordings that we're sharing. But it was interesting to me that throughout this process, they quickly became uncomfortable with me asking questions at all. You might want to stop talking to some to people at some point. I mean, I can't imagine you, you don't have enough information by now. I mean, again, I don't know how much more you need to know, Amber, but... Yeah. Um, obviously, I mean, you know, I'm, trying to go ahead. I'm just saying, like... Yeah, because she's, she's trying to make everyone look really, really, really guilty. So she's going to ask every question possible. It's not because she's trying to understand or get evidence. It's like, I need to get all the possible incriminating things that you're going to say about our master and tell him so I look like the best little girl ever, the best follower. I'm just looking out for you. Like, I guess my question is, how long do you want to stay in the state? I think Robbie's kind of frustrated with me because I've been asking questions. And it's happening for me too. This group of plotters feels so strongly about you being so problematic that they have taken it this far so as to plot to take you down, to take the community down. Yet they don't even know medical medium information that well. You probably oh, no. read the book more thoroughly than I, than I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first one, I actually really liked the first, very first one that came out. It was kind of real, except for the stories. I kind of skipped over those, but you know, all the protocols and stuff were very helpful. And the information seems sincere. Um, whether it's right or not, I don't know, but it certainly was interesting and I had never heard of what he was talking about before I met him. So I am grateful for that because I think what he's mentioning is very real. This woman, this plotter is admitting that the information is helpful. She's also saying that she skimmed through it. So she didn't really study the book. She didn't really study the information. And then at the same time, she was telling me that practitioners come to her to learn from her all the time. And she was suggesting that I could come to her for practitioner support and education. Are there people who are applying medical medium information still who call you and ask for advice? Absolutely. Yeah. That's mostly what I have. I have very few clients that found me outside of medical medium. And, and you know, word of mouth is really big. Um, you know, and when somebody mentions you on social media, yeah. you know, you, well, you're probably there right now <laughs> with uh, getting recommendations. And people love word of mouth from others yeah. wanting help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, but also, oh, so yeah. practitioners who are applying medical medium information will ask you for advice? Oh, yeah, yeah. This plotter is positioning herself as an authority, as a health practitioner. This plotter is positioning her position as an authority. Okay. When it seems as though she doesn't even really know medical medium information, she doesn't believe in spirit, it sounds like she really only read the first book. It sounds like she skimmed it at best. There are eight books plus a ton of other resources. If food were the only yeah, speaking of, uh, literally the last second uh, ago, I'm, I'm looking at my, the comments on the last video that we did, the heartbreaking medical medium, this medical medium follower died two minutes ago. I so have your number. So do millions of medical medium followers. He has released the real story on his podcast. I'm 100% sure you'll remove this post. Shake my head. See, I don't want my information out there either. <laughs> key to healing, which is what Anthony implies, really. Um, so, but I mean, I mean, do you do you ever hear Anthony talk about anything other than what to eat? Not not a lot, right? I mean, he does get into some spiritual stuff and things, but not really. Yeah, I mean, he had talked about he's got like the angels, he's got the. <clears throat> The soul healing techniques he's got in the healing path resource he talked about, which I think that like that doesn't that's something that nobody really comes across anymore. He talked about the importance of like exercise and sunlight and yeah. and all of those other sorts of okay, things. Well, that's good. Yeah, I have heard the healing path, but not for a really long time. Yeah. Um, well, that's right. He did mention some of that. Yeah, I don't know. He really focuses on food though now. So here I wasn't going to I wasn't going to go into explaining more. I wasn't about to try to give this woman a lesson on how all of the books and how all of the resources are about so much more than just how to eat. I wanted to uh -huh. see what she knew and it became really clear to me that this group They're about like him being a genius. Again, does not really understand medical medium information for what it is, and yet their sources they feel so strongly about you and the information being problematic in some way, shape, or form. 
yet um, they admit to applying it in their own lives explicitly without citing the source. Maybe you can still take that following and just, you know, do your own thing aside from medical medium, you know, not without, like, like Robbie said, without mentioning him, yeah. but still like, no, uh, teach that. people what you've learned and what you, what you practice yourself and what works for you and kind of work on it from that perspective. Yeah. Since you have a following already, you could. Now, do I, when I talk to people about health and well-being, use a million things that I've learned from him? 100%. I mean, getting this information out in the world, he shouldn't care who gets credit for it. Exactly. I don't know any healer, any real healer. That's what I've been saying. Like, he's so, like, it's always a drama. Like, they're not attributing this, this information to me. I came up with celery juice. I came up with that, like, thing. It's like, who gives a shit? If it's healing people, wouldn't you want it to spread faster? And, you know, who cares? No, he wants the credit. That's been a big thing since before this article came out. That wants to have credit for things. And trust me, you didn't, you know, you, you didn't need to credit Anthony for what you've learned. And you can do that without ever using the word medical medium or mm-hmm. Anthony William, you know? Here this group is coaching me on how to not cite the information. They're group grooming They're me. coaching me on how to plagiarize the information. Unlike them, I cite the source and I always... Unlike them, I tell people that medical medium is the one who told me that sunlight is good for me and exercise moderately several times a week is not a bad idea. God. Because it's about integrity... Mm -hmm. It's about caring about other people. Mm -hmm. It's about people needing to heal. Mm -hmm. Citing the source is about respect. Not citing the source ends up resulting in people putting their own spin on it, even if they don't mean to. It gets tainted right by human interference. The information gets changed and further distorted as it gets passed down the line, becoming something else entirely like a game of telephone where no one can fully get what they need to heal. And, you know, it just, it makes me question the level of compassion that this group has for others. Citing the source is not about Anthony. It's not about you, Anthony. It's not about you seeking notoriety in any way, shape, or form. I know that it, it comes from a place that- I like how she's, she's talking for him. It's not about that, Anthony. It's not about that. It's like, can he say this for himself? <laughs> Who are you? And why are you telling him what his intentions are? Deeply caring about people and people having access to the original pure information, which just so happens to be free. You can access it all for free so that the people who are... Um, what, at the library? Is that what she's trying to insinuate here? That the library is free? Yeah, he just so happens to like include all of the uh, affiliate links on his website. And he used to charge like several hundred dollars from what I remember to do these consultations where he would, you know, do this over the phone with and tell you you have Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, that was not free. So I don't know what she's talking about there. Struggling and suffering can take it as far as they need to go. This group, they want to brand themselves. They want to be somebody. They all have businesses in the wellness space. They're trying to convince me to have no integrity. (laughs) They're essentially saying that all of the copyrighted original information is free game. Can you imagine copywriting God's uh, healing for the world? Like God has told you, the spirit has told you how to heal people from all illnesses. And you're like, copyright that immediately. (laughs) They want rights to that. They Uh, feel entitled to that. They feel entitled to continue on with their brands. Meanwhile, they want a post-medical medium era. They want it all down. They want everyone to stop mentioning medical medium at all. These people with these intentions are the main sources behind this plot and this article. They're plagiarized from other books who were his mentors before him. Like, yeah, everybody knows that apples have X vitamins and Z vitamins. And his information is very, very, very basic. Vitamins in an apple is interesting because the medical medium information, the books, they really don't talk much about vitamins. That's actually what everybody else does out there because that's essentially as as far as science. He has not taught. This is his podcast. He has not spoken in like 10 minutes. She's defending him on like everything. It's like, can the man who did this defend himself or no? It's just so bizarre. Goes. And I know that you and I, Anthony, could talk for hours about what makes medical medium information completely unique and original. Um, it's quite an insult to oversimplify the information like that and to try to discredit how unlike anything else that's out there that's ever been done before in history, it is. In and history. whether people want to admit that or not, Whew. it's true. And then we've got this plotter who's accusing you of plagiarizing information. It's a serious accusation. 
So when I think about that and I see what the plot is saying, that's a serious <laughs> accusation. First of all, my publisher would never let one of the medical medium books out the door if it was plagiarized. No one's accused you of plagiarizing other than coming up with the most basic ass thing like, oh, exercise is good for you. You should think about it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> like, okay. And also his publisher is Hay House, which has like, you know, no standards whatsoever. So <laughs> good luck. Level. They have a lot of editors. They uh, purposely look for things like that. They can't just let the book go out because these books are symptoms and conditions and a lot of intricate information about the body. All that stuff has to be cited from studies and places of origin that could be like medical clinics. Um, no, <laughs> that's bullshit. This, this is supposed to be an advanced... Like, bef this is supposed to be, like, earlier than the studies. Like, the studies are, are so... F this is, like, future uh, knowledge. And all of it comes from the spirit. So what is he citing what? Let's, let's just take an example here. Let me find something. Um, okay. Vaginal shingles. How about that? We're talking about vaginal shingles. It says... Uh, and this is from a chapter called Shingles, True Cause of Colitis, TMJ, Diabetic Neuropathy, and more. Okay, here it goes. Vaginal shingles. This virus affects only women. Wow. It goes deep into the inner vaginal walls and inflames the nerves there. It also travels inside the bladder and rectum to wreak havoc. Sorry, wreak additional havoc, creating a burning so irritating it's akin to torture. Where's the source here? If a doctor doesn't dismiss it as being, quote, all in your head because she or he can't find the cause, she or he will typically misdiagnose it once again as a hormonal imbalance and prescribe hormones to treat it. This is not an effective treatment and can sometimes make the situation worse. Many women have truly suffered from this variety and so far the medical industry has ignored it. No source, no medical study, other than medical medium Anthony William decided that this is the facts and he got it from an angel in his ear. Um, okay, what is another one? Let's pick another random one. Let's see. Arthritis, perhaps. Uh, let's, let me see. Secrets behind other mystery illnesses. Let's see. I need a good one. I don't want sh more shingles. Lyme disease gets like an entire category, uh, chapter, of course. Um, okay, this, was, this is called Lyme disease. What is it? Okay, here you go. Page 195, medical medium. This is my source, medical medium. Revise and expanded secrets behind chronic and mystery illness and how to heal. As previously mentioned, medical communities originally believed that Lyme disease was caused by a bacterium named Boreala burgfordeffri transmitted by a bite from a deer tick. Recently, doctors and researchers have started to realize they may have focused on the wrong bacteria for the last three and a half decades. New patients are now hearing about different decoy bugs such as Bartonella and the microscopic parasite Babesia which is a hybrid cross between bacteria and parasite. And the new patients aren't being told about the long road others have been down with the Boreala tag about the traps along the way. They don't have the benefit of that perspective. You should know, by the way, that Bartonella and Babesia are also harmless and most of us carry them. They're once again bait and switch theories that promise an answer but deliver only conjecture. In case you're wondering, Bartonella and Babesia have never been clinically found in a tick in nature that wasn't attached to a human being. Truth is, Lyme disease isn't the result of ticks, parasites, or bacteria. Lyme disease is actually viral, not bacterial or parasitical. When medical communities finally awaken to this truth, there will be hope for Lyme patients. The true cause of what's being called Lyme disease varies in each individual. And then it talks about Epstein-Barr again, because he talks about that with everything. It's like, where's the study? Where is the... It's like, oh, the doctors don't even know this. So this is bullshit. I don't... Like, read the book if you want to further proof. Articles that are out there from doctors, it all has to be cited. Epstein-Barr, exactly. just be thrown into a medical medium book and then sent out the door by the publisher. Yes, so it could. It has been. There's 
no such thing as plagiarizing in these books. And these books would have to cite every single thing everywhere out there. The publisher wouldn't have it in any other way. So yeah, so that, that yeah, accusation no is ridiculous. He's very, he's very smart mm -hmm. and, um, evil. Yeah. It probably has some kind of personality disorder, potentially narcissism. Yeah. And I, I don't know what else. I found that to be a really interesting assessment coming from a group of individuals that refers to themselves as elite. But I'm letting you know, like, we are an elite group of people. Mm -hmm. We're in an elite category, you know? I want to play this clip again in no. a minute because recently one of these plotters claimed that nobody ever, they tried to claim that nobody ever referred to themselves as elites. And I want to display that I'm not putting words in these people's mouths. These are actually things that were said by them on these recordings. I also want to point out the fact that you, Anthony, have never referred to yourself as elite. You've never referred to yourself as being above anyone or anything yes, of the Yes, you life. have! There's this really twisted dynamic with this group. And I love how she's talking for him. Like, he, you've never said this. Okay, let me... I just read this a second ago. That's why I think it's so funny. Okay, this is the... Wait, this is the about the author section at the back of the book, right? About the author, okay? This is a real book, everybody. It's proof right here. This is a physical copy. Okay, uh, it says, Anthony was born with the unique ability to converse with the spirit of compassion who provides him with extraordinarily advanced healing medical information that's far ahead of its time. Since... Since age four, Anthony has been using his gift to see into people's conditions and tell them and their doctors how to recover their health. His unprecedented accuracy and success rate as the medical medium have earned him the trust and love of millions worldwide, among them movie stars, rock stars, billionaires, professional athletes, and countless other people from all walks of life who couldn't find a way to heal until he provided them with insights from above. Over the decades, Anthony has also been an invaluable resource to doctors who need help solving their most difficult cases. That's not saying that you're an elite person that's gifted above everyone else. Okay, that is just the, the summary. And then, uh, I, I gotta find it, but like, this is called Where It All Begins. <laughs> Genesis of this book. Okay, um... We talked, we watched the video where he's like, tell grandma has lung cancer. Okay. Um, but I want to see, there's one paragraph I remember. It was like, there is no one, up, there's, the spirit of compassion is like one step below God and below him is Anthony Williams. So he is, you know, three degrees away from God himself. Uh, dang. Okay. Uh, and then he's the, okay, here it is. I think the one and only medical medium. Okay. This is on page 15. All right. While there are obvious disadvantages to having a voice continually talking into my ear, there are also some advantages because spirit of compassion is distinct and separate from me. It doesn't matter if on a given day I'm feeling upset or ill or bored spirit is unaffected by my emotions and will consistently provide powerful advanced information ahead of medical research and science about chronic illness and how to heal. It's the same process as when I was a child, regardless of what my life struggles are, even if I'm in no condition in the moment to process what spirit of compassion compassion is telling me. For example, if I only had two hours of sleep because of certain challenges occurring in my life, the information will still come through. Focusing and concentrating on the intricate specificities takes work. I don't have to use my intuitive skills. I don't channel the information either. Other mediums sometimes hear inner voices, but mine isn't internal. People seeking help ask me, should I take off my jewelry to allow you to get a better read? It doesn't matter if they're wrapped in tinfoil. The information is still going to come through and they're going to get the answers they need to move forward okay so again he's claiming he doesn't you know can wear your joy i am automatically understanding what you have so given this printed in the book i would imagine stephanie believed that if she had cancer he would tell her i'm often asked if spirit of compassion can help me with my family, loved ones, and even myself to get physical and spiritual information? The answer is yes. Again, because spirit is separate from me, all I have to do is ask, and he tells me and shows me what is best to know. This is one of the things that makes this gift unique. Um, okay. Listen, he's talking about the reporter that he did this with. Uh, no name, of course. Um, let's see. 
Okay. Uh, okay, here it is. Uh, spirit of compassion still tells me that no other medium does what I do. No one else alive has a voice providing profound, advanced, on-target medical information with crystal clarity. Spirit of compassion's information about chronic mystery illness changes people's lives in a way nothing else has in our modern history. I've devoted my life to this work. I'm here as a messenger. It's who I am. Lordy, lordy. So I think... That is fairly uh, definitive proof, cited proof, that he does think he's an elite person. <laughs> All that to say, you're full of shit. Where it's like everything, it seems like everything that they're accusing you of is actually what they're doing and how they are. But I'm letting you know, like, we are an elite group of people. Mm -hmm. We're in an elite, an elite category, you know? And by the way, Ash didn't need to work. Ash has yeah, yeah. ever, ever. The, the woman is she's, uh, family money. Mm -hmm. A lot of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, private jet and plus. Did I hear that correctly? Can I hear that back? That oh clip? my God. And by the way, Ash didn't need to work. Ash has yeah, yeah. ever, ever. The, the woman is she's, uh, family money. Mm -hmm. A lot of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, private jet and plus. So basically, they're saying they're an elite group. You've shown the all the recordings so far or a fraction of them really from what you said you have but you hold on i'm getting bored of this <laughs> heal with amber scamber okay i just saw this <laughs> emotional support from healing food do you have fear do you have ptsd eat three bananas <sighs> bananas can help reverse a state of mind that is saturated with fear consuming three or more per day can help to reduce ptsd they strengthen the core of who we are, encouraging us to peel back our false shields and expose our true selves. Three bananas a day keeps the war memories away. That is what I've always said. <laughs> Low self-worth ginger. Oh, sorry, turmeric, my bad. Turmeric. Turmeric is ideal for those who downplay their contributions to projects and relationships who are constantly down on themselves or have trouble accepting compliments. It can help you appreciate just what a valuable, shining human being you are and all the positives you have to offer. Okay, just eat some turmeric to feel better about yourself. Oops. Heightened emotional reactivity. Okay, so you need aromatic herbs. Excuse me. Thyme, rosemary, sage, and oregano to be not overly stimulated. Okay. Uneasiness and lack of peace. You need pears. Plotting pears of peace. Pears are the ideal food to remedy these emotional experiences. An overstressed and overheated pancreas and liver are often behind someone's unsettled emotions, such as frustration, irritation, uneasiness, or lack of peace. <laughs> we need pears in the Middle East immediately. We need to send pears to all of the war-torn countries in the world right now. Send some pears to Ukraine. See how ha what happened. Actually, send them to Russia. That's what we need to... to Express ship these pairs too. God. Uh, confu are you confused? Here's some berries. <laughs> this will help you. Okay, sorry. I just thought that was funny. <gasps> what is she doing? Oh, she's saying all these eggs are bad for you. Okay, just making sure. Swipe through and tell your friends how to choose the healthiest eggs. The answer is all eggs are evil. Right, Kitty? Nobody blames the egg. <laughs> and they actually bullshit themselves, still eat eggs. Most everybody has been either been on eggs when they're younger or they're on eggs later. Damn, she, she, she got us. In the early 1900s, researchers discovered the phenomenon and eggs started being used in labs as food for microorganisms. Now, when you consume them, eggs feed the pathogens that played the largest role in the explosion of chronic illnesses. So they think celery secure egg is the cause. Eggs are praised due to aggressive and strategic marketing. <laughs> Big egg. Really, for real. That's what it says. Eggs are praised due to aggressive and strategic marketing. 
got egg for their protein content, but actually completely lose their protein content through denaturation when they are cooked. This makes it impossible for our bodies to utilize the protein anyway. While our bodies could utilize the protein in raw eggs, the raw eggs will still feed pathogens and disease, which vastly negates any benefits. You can easily get protein from plenty of other much healthier and more bioavailable sources. God, they hate eggs. Our ancestors may have used eggs as a survival food, but we are living in a very different world today. Pathogens have been recently manipulated by humans. Eggs have been recently manipulated by humans. Okay. All right. We are facing completely different threats, health challenges, and circumstances. This is why what may have worked in the past is somewhat irrelevant to what's best for us today. And only when we accept the truth, can we be fully empowered. The anti-egg sentiment is so interesting. Anyways. Okay. Uh, Eggs are out. Celery is in. Gaslighting everyone is in as well. (laughs) recordings showing that they're plotting this plan they went to the media company mainstream media outlet they are strategic about it (coughs) and they even have a ranking system like the number one person involved number two number three number four and now i hear one of the people has a private jet they don't have to work or work for a living and they have what seems to be lots of family wealth me and I don't have a private jet. I have to work for a living. I have to work to make sure I could bring this information to everyone, to the public. Yeah, that sounds like Rachel. I have to work at being a scammer. I have no other options in this world. And there's no paywalls and there's no programs, nothing like that. That is true. I do agree with that. Of course, I don't mind when people monetize their websites or do what they want to do with their businesses, but I don't monetize my website like other people do. And meanwhile, this person has a private jet, lots of wealth, seems to be the number one plotter from what it looks like with the list and ranking system. And yeah, I mean, I'm speechless, really. Um, I come from the working class. That's where I come from. But apparently this is an elite group. They're saying that in in these recordings. Um, So yeah, and knowing that these plotters are actually looking to get that documentary together, negative documentary, all of it, plus the article. And then when you look at the plotters and the information, they don't even care to even want to know what my name is. (laughs) But yet my fate is in their hands. And the community's fate is in their hands of this plot. It's really interesting. Yeah. So let's let this group speak for themselves more about their plot. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it from a journalist's perspective, this piece is unfucking believable. I mean, this is this is a journalist dream. I mean, you you, you want to, I mean, it, the, the celebrities, the number of books sold. Yeah, it is awful, and that's why this there's an article coming out about him. I don't yeah. know if you know anything about that. It's not a good one. <laughs> yeah, I would not want to be on that train when that article comes out. I'm just saying. I think there's there's a lot coming. Is yeah. what I think, which is why it's really good that they're telling you now. Yeah, we're hopeful that once the article's out. Um, one of the directors or producers that Britain works with will. And Kelsey, I just saw your Instagram DM. I missed it. I'm so sorry. It said uh, an okay cult. I should have looked it up earlier. I'm sorry. I think I meant to, and I didn't. We can get an okay cult. Late, but yes. Oh, okay, cult. There you go. Okay, cult. What else? Medical Medium has a couple cult ones too. This spells cult. C U L T. I don't know anything more cultish than that. Too true. I mean, why does this sound cult every second? Look out, medical medium's a cult. Oh, it's a cult. <laughs> That's the full cult collection. <laughs> uh, you know, become interested in telling the story really well. Oh, cool, awesome. I'll pass that on to my husband. He was a cinematographer for that. He primarily has been working in documentary the last few years. Britain's on the phone. And I was like, I was like, look, guys, like, Britain, I was like, you have the connections. Like, you were the cinematographer of Bad Vegan. Like, can't, why don't you just go, like, just talk to people? Yeah. And then, and then like, that's when, and that's when Ash went, because, like, theoretically, without me pushing this along, why the fuck didn't Ash go to 
months prior, right? Like, what's her, why does she do that? Like, I, I feel like I is doing this. Yeah. Huh? Okay. That would make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No question. I'm in shock. I'm in shock. As I stated I'm in shocked. our in part one, this group appears to be using a manipulated story of a deceased person in order to drive out their goals. What we're uncovering again and again is, I mean, again, this is just kind of scratching the surface. It's it's that there are so many more layers to this. No, this not. the deceased person, it seems to me, in all of these seventeen hours of calls that I've had, all these recordings, seventeen hours um, with these people as part of this group, is that the story is Lord. essentially a guise that really draws people in and really makes people feel like oh you know medical medium is so bad and but then as i was really speaking to these people and and hearing them out about what was problematic about you to them a huge percentage of it was just all of this other stuff it was there were all of these other layers and all this stuff underneath the surface these stories these rumors all of this twisted misinformation and then you can kind of see in the recordings in their own words in a lot of these clips what is actually going on behind the scenes the thing is like okay none of these people thought they were being recorded i would imagine because she's like i secretly recorded them for my own safety like okay whatever and so if you're t- if i'm talking off the cuff i'm gonna be a lot more open with what i'm saying than if i'm gonna be recording myself on camera that is how it works i know that okay i think this is true and I could tell somebody in my life about this my theory on something or whatever or be a little bit more open and you know how I feel versus this is my platform and I am using it in the way that I want to communicate with the audience like so the fact that they're nitpicking every single thing that was recorded it's like these are people like it's like if you were in your bathroom when you were farting you're like oh my god you farted oh my god like that's crazy it's like yeah but i didn't know you were recording me in there you know like i wouldn't have done it if i if you were here like or if i knew that there was a recording you know like that's sort of how i feel like you're not giving people a chance to like form their thoughts and that's what the journalist was there for to filter out the rumors and like hearsay and all that and put it into a can it be corroborated and then that was what made it so the fact that like oh on a recording that you didn't know you were being recorded on you may have said something it's like okay well i think yeah everyone sort of is different when they're not being publicly and uh, any rumor or lie or whatever it's like maybe by the time you are ready to get your thoughts together you figure it out and they're, they're, they have not been given that chance what's driving these people in in ways that <laughs> and also <laughs> See, I wouldn't have done that if I was on a video. <laughs> I don't know if they realize, um, but maybe some people who are involved in this are being driven by, as I said before, some potentially misplaced grief or potentially guilt about their own involvement with the situation, something like that. But it seems like a lot of it is being driven by nefarious intentions <sighs> and by what huh? some of these people can stand to gain personally, professionally, financially, and otherwise from the fulfillment of this plot, this plot plan i'm seeing bloody plan yeah i mean i'm in i don't even know what to say i like i can't get my words together because i'm hearing cinematographers um making connections making connections about the documentary that they're bringing to the media outlet i'm hearing that i'm hearing money uh is is involved (laughs) i'm hearing a person talk about how they wouldn't want to be on this train when this article comes out which is, uh-huh. which is, means they all knew, they're all plotting. It's their connections to the media company. It's all in these recordings. I heard it's a journalist's dream because they're selling it to a journalist saying, hey, this is a journalist's dream. <laughs> um, I hear they're talking about how many numbers of books sold, um, things in that nature. Oh, we know that Anthony lives in Florida. I knew that. He lives like in Naples, I believe, somewhere near there. Um, so maybe she's in Florida too. Uh, this is a premeditated plot. Who can do this? It's unconsciousable. Doesn't matter how much damage is done to the community. Doesn't matter anything. They have a strategy and a plan in place. It's all there in the recordings. I don't even know what to say when I hear these recordings. Can you replay that clip? The important no. Clip? I mean, they're all important, but the important clip about they had the idea first, the plot, and they took it to the media company britain was on the phone and i was like i was like look guys like britain i was like you have the connections like you want to send him a time for a bad vegan like why don't you just go like just talk to people 
Yeah. And then, and then like, that's when, and that's what Ash did. Because, like, theoretically, without me pushing this along, why the fuck didn't Ash go to months prior? Right? Huh? Like, what's it, why does she do that? Like, I, I feel like I didn't see anything. So it wasn't the media company that took upon the story upon themselves. The recordings say everything. Yeah, that's how it works. Nine times out of ten, the reporter gets a tip. That's what getting a tip is. Hey, I got the story for you. I think it would work for you. This is what it is. This girl died and, or a woman died, and uh, she followed medical medium to the like end. And, you know, he he's, should be held responsible. That's how it works. Nine times out of ten. The reporters go, hmm, let me hear from my spirit of journalism what my story is today. <laughs> that's only him. Thank you, JLB Nerdy. Thank you. JLB Nerdy says, I'm late. A lady is just defending him on his pod, basically. Her name is Scamber. She's scamberless. She's scandalous. And she's scam. Her name is Scamber. And uh, she is a medical medium follower. There she is. There she is. Heal with Amber. And this is what she used to eat. I don't know. Two. <laughs> Two coconut shrimp, three malt balls, a Tolberone, some whipped cream or something, and a piece of toast. Excuse me. And now she eats 40 pounds of vegetables. So you can trust her. And uh, yeah, she's doing all the dirty work for him, saying like, that's not what you're about. That is not what he's about. While he sits there and says nothing. <laughs> so yeah, Welcome. You missed the best part, that uh, his life is based on Buddy the Elf. They act like they do no harm. They act like they're positive, And this is what they're up to. Am I right? Mm. As you laugh while you're getting ready for bed, instead of praying to God, you're praying, I'm dead. <laughs> That's a weird one. And it's money off of my back. Ain't it the truth? Ain't the truth. How much money do you think that they made from this Netflix documentary, JLB Nerdy? It's not $5,000. It's not $2,000. <laughs> it's not $10,000. It's a lot of money. <laughs> Maybe so. Thank you, JLB Nerdy. Okay. I don't know if I can make it through this again. <laughs> we're like, we're circling the drain of nothing. It turns out it was their idea. That's the instigator there. And then the husband has the connections to the media outlet. <sighs> And they took that plot to the media outlet. That plot. Um, sounds like <laughs> took the plot to the media outlet using husband's connections too. Um, and this is before it even started. So this is even early on. I don't think cinematographers necessarily have, and it might, cinematographer might be a strong word. He's probably a camera dude. They don't have connections at Vanity Fair necessarily. You could just email them too. So what this plot is saying it's blunder. unthinkable it's just unthinkable uh, yeah. and like you were saying before it's these are we're showing motives we're showing true intentions by these people saying these things in their own words we're showing all of this colluding and and just really interesting dynamics and how the story all came to be and there's a serious lack of concern for the damage that essentially they intend to, to cause. So can you talk more about that and, and how this process has, has affected you? Well, it's affected me for sure, but How's the it affected you? worst part is it's, it's affected the communities because uh -huh. I had to forfeit the book I was going to do for this year that was going to be released in October, but Why? there's no way to do it. So it was a spiritual book that everybody was waiting for. <laughs> um, so I had to cancel that, uh. um, four months straight with hundreds of questions from a journalist. And the, I mean, the crazy thing is, it's just, yeah, I haven't worked in four months for the community at all. So when you, <laughs> it, those are the things that I care about the most. Never mind. Uh, he, he's been asked questions by the journalist for four months, yet gives no comment through his lawyer at, in the actual article. <laughs> you couldn't write a book because of that? Okay. The damage, you know, involved with, you know, my family and, um, you know, all of that involved, it's, it's really the big part for me is, is the future of getting the information out to the community and all that. So this is the first time since I started putting books out that I've had to forfeit and actually just cancel the whole book. Um, 
birth Why? this year for sure. So yeah, there's it's <laughs> makes no it's sense. affecting my life. One article of course, came out, but it's affecting what, which is what I always care about the most, which is the community and people who are struggling. That's always just number one for me. Of course, yes, of you know, course. Anything in my life, it's uh, it's secondary anyway. But still, uh-huh, uh-huh. it's it, yeah, it hasn't been easy. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, it's that's. I mean, for this to have affected. The spiritual book that I know everybody in the community was so excited about and so much looking forward to, it just, there, there really aren't any words. Um, so he's using this to punish the remaining audience, I think. Like, well, I was going to heal you more, but, you know, these plotting plotters plan to pickle pence against me. So, you know, I can't uh, do it now. So you will, you will die, <laughs> basically. I was going to heal you with my information, but I've chosen not to anymore because I had to be asked questions by a journalist for about one article. It's so crazy. So I think it's like, you know, trying to, uh, what do you call it? Mobilize his army, his medical medium army to go against these plotting plotters who a lot of them, I think, know, even people in this chat, like sort of know like who they are and their brand separately. So it's like not really, they're not super protected from being targeted in some way. And it's going to pop up in a second, but Whittier, thank you so much, Whittier. Whittier says, these people belong in jail. I, I agree. Here we go. FBI, open up! That's what, that's what I wish would happen to these people because it is sick. And I think uh, until there's better government regulations, I don't foresee this happening. They need to crack down on these supplements. They need to crack down on these grifting, life coaching, medical, medium, psychic bullshit and protect the people that are the most vulnerable, which is people going through trauma, tragedy, health problems. Like they need protection. Make it harder for these grifters to jump through, make them jump through hoops before they can profit immensely from the, you know, the vulnerable population, like I said. So, I don't know. What do I think will actually happen? Nothing. What do I wish I could do to all scammers at all times? Somebody ought to smack you. That's what I think. Oh, man. But this is the, this is America, baby. Sales is love. Sales is love. Okay, here we go. A couple more minutes, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. For how unfortunate, how, how disappointing, how awful this is. And again, hearing the true intentions behind it all, this, this whole thing is just completely unprecedented. It's something that's never happened before in the health and wellness industry there it's going to take some time for us to unpack this layer by layer and i'm grateful again that i have the pure evidence straight from these people's mouths to be able to really show people what's been going on because there are a lot of twists and turns to it and and i just want to also point out the fact that you anthony have been talking about this all year you've been talking about this even i remember i think before that you've been talking about this for a while that there are people who have been trying to take down the community that that's something that has become a major issue and that people are not citing the original information back to medical medium and um in the community and and this group you know has been persuading others to join them and to do the same and i know that a lot of people didn't really kind of believe what you'd been saying didn't want to believe it that there was really something like this going on and so it's extremely sad um unfortunately it's true and now everybody can hear it for themselves is there any chance to play the last round of clips again no. For, for everybody and I personally. No, I can't. I can't. I'm out. I'm out. That's in. That's the end. I can't. I cannot hear the same round of clips again that said nothing. <laughs> I guess we'll never know what happened at the end. At the end of the medical medium. Like how there's still. Well, the whole thing. Uh, 31 minutes left of that one. And then there's a whole nother hour of another one where they're just saying the same thing, I guess. They're holding the, they're like bearing the lead because there has been nothing incriminating that I've heard. I'm waiting for like the smoking gun. Like what is, what is the big thing? And there's gonna be like, she said that she flies a pli- private jet. <gasps> <gasps> okay, what does that have to do with you abandoning a follower at the end of her life in this article coming out? 
I don't know, I don't know, but that will, we'll never know either way because we ain't gonna listen to it because I don't have the patience or the time. And it's Friday night and I would like to watch a TV show and relax before the weekend starts. And I would also like him to go to jail. And I would also like the plotting plotters to plot my plot and plinky plop, ploop, 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 plop, ploop. And I'd also like to show you Taro because she's so dang cute. He's so dang cute. I think we need a tarot. We need a moment of tarot. Right? Hold on. Let me get behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. <laughs> That's good enough, huh? This is the this is the the real the real me, baby. Don't you leave. Don't you leave now. I'll be so sad. This is me. This is me. This is my real song. This is me, real dog. Jump scare. This is my actual conspiratorial map. Right? Yeah. Why don't you face the camera, huh? You always give them your tail. She's being so cute right now. Right? And I had my pen. Where's my pen? Where's my tarot? Oh, there, she, there it is. The tarot pen. Rubby the head. Rubby the head. La, 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 la. Brushing the hair. Right? Did you have fun? Say something cute. Say something cuter. Say, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to go off the stream. <laughs> she won't. Okay. Uh, I'll be back next week. I'm not sure about the topic. Um, I'm going to put up a poll, I think, because there's some that I've been mentioning here and there and that I've, you know, push it off for something else. But we got Jeremy, the health coach, and the people in the grocery stores that are just screaming about canola oil and everything else in between, causing a menace in the supermarket. Menaces in the market. Uh, we got that. We got um, we got a bunch of options. We got we can go look at Tom Bilyeu. We can look at um, Gary V. That was kind of my suggestion yesterday to look at their NFT because VCon is going on right now. So it might be a good time to visit. Like, is Gary V targeting children? Because that's what it seems to me. He's has he's got toys in the Macy's children's section now. And uh, yeah, he's got a, a new rap song with Snoop Dogg for some reason. So. There's a lot to unpack there. And then, of course, Tom Bilyeu's uh, NFT project just came out, and I don't think it's doing very well because he's been pushing his uh, relationship advice quite a lot lately. So to me, that means it ain't really being successful. So I'm going to do something a little, not different, but I tried it last night, uh, the, the little storytelling with music underneath and I liked it. So we'll try it again and see how it goes for the um, end. If you'd like to join the membership, the link is in the description. You get access to the emotes and I'll, I'll check real quick how many we have left because I did not update the graphic in this one. But next week I will have an updated graphic, I promise you. And new merch is available. New merch, manatee festing merch is available. That is also in the link below if you like it the link below link in bio it is below no pressure to buy if you like it if you like manatees and manifestation <laughs> no don't leave okay fine here it's closer for you <laughs> it's closer <laughs> what it's closer. Say something, I'm giving up on you. Okay, sorry. Um, yes, that is there too. And as well as True Sadness merch is still always there. Okay. Are you gonna go? No, okay. <laughs> I was looking up how many members to the next emo unlock. And it says, dun, 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 oh, wait, oh, I got a drum roll now. Sorry, 18, 18 more and we get another emote. So I'll make a counter. That'll be also part of my, I'm just giving you guys all my to-do list for the week, for the weekend and the week coming up. So 18 more and we get another emote and we need suggestions of which one, maybe celery, maybe a celery one, maybe a plot. I don't know what a plot emote would look like, but 
we can we can figure it out all right Tara is done she's over it where are you trying to go where are you trying to go little kitty mind the way she's gonna sing too all right ready I won't okay well here we can't lose this this moment here we can't lose this moment. This moment will be gone. Kitty cat. Why are you so sweet to me? I don't know. Okay, there you go. Kitty. Okay, you can see her tail. Ready. Okay, import the song. Oh, wait, did I not download it? Hold on. Wait a minute, wait just a minute. Let's play lo let's do a lo-fi one. That's fun. Um also what is this? Okay, that sounds good. Um the topic we'll start with celery, a celery farm. That's what we'll start today. Okay, you ready? Ready? Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a rainy cannon kind of day out today. I was studying in my apartment overlooking the city and I saw a sign that said rainy cannon and I didn't know what it meant. So I googled it and it took me to a website called starrynights.net it was all about the starriest nights in the entire world. It was a top 10 list. Nicole Campbell was the writer. She's had a fascination with starry nights for decades. And Canabe was the advertisement on the article. Advertising hella hella weed. And it said, hmm, $4.20. You can buy right now. And Angela Arnold was one of those customers. She purchased two orders for $8.40. And she was happy for the rest of the month. But going back to the article, Heather Tells was the photographer and took all the photos of the various starry nights in the sky. And she had her own version of this list. A console is the city in which the best starry night appears. <laughs> it's in Manchester, England for some reason. No reason why, just because that popped into my head. And KT, KT wants to say no, nuh-uh. She commented on it and said, no, that's not the best one. The best one is in Kingston, Jamaica, because that was the other one that popped into my head. And DJ Papino just happened to be DJing at that Sandals Resort in Kingston when Heather, the photographer, was there. And they hit it off. And they chatted the whole night away and danced bachata together under that starry night sky. And Joms was the stand-up comedian for that resort that weekend and made them pee their pants with laughter. <laughs> and even offered them eggs in the morning. Because he's also, he, he, he moonlights as the comedian, but he also works in the kitchen. Specifically in the omelet bar. And Tiffany was at said omelet bar that morning when the stars were no longer in the sky. <laughs> she said, can I get goat cheese and mushrooms and Jom said ew eggs are bad for you but yes and Chels Marie was right behind Tiffany and she wanted an omelette too but she wanted ham and gruyere cheese and Jom said that's my order too and they then danced bachata the next night and Alaska Blood Tundra was nowhere to be seen. 
because they were, of course, in Alaska. Alaska. <laughs> Getting so cold in a blanket, cuddling by themselves, watching TV. But guess who knocked on the door? Crystal G. Crystal G was at the door. And she said, I have a special offer for you. Lindsay Walden, my boss, is allowing me to sell this ad to you and only to you. Free moose control. We will take care of any moose that comes near this house. Kimberly Cosse, our moose expert, guarantees it. And Alaska Tundra's like, dang, that's a good price. Free 99? All right, sign me up. And then Alice in Wonderland 66 called the next day and said, that was a scam. There is no company that does this. There is so, no such thing as moose control. Dumb, dumb. And then hung up the phone. And Kara Soto was the person who made that prank call and set the whole thing up because she's a jokester, just like Joms. She's a jokester. Yeah, but not the joker. That's a different type of person. Nality. Yeah. <laughs> Kimberly Harris smiles. She was a part of the plot <laughs> to prank Alaska Blue Tundra too. But she was sick because she had some eggs as well. And she couldn't make it to the prank. So she called in sick with Eggstein Barr. <laughs> And to replace Kimberly Harris Smiles, Heather Hope showed up. But she was a day late because her eye calendar got it messed up. So she was just walking around in the wilderness of Alaska and she actually did come across a moose. And she found it, found it ironic because she said, the reason I'm here is to prank people about a mess, messed, <laughs> a moose control company that doesn't exist. The irony was not lost on her. Dave Kelly was the moose. He has a name. And he's seven feet tall and 700 pounds and furry and had big antlers. But he didn't tell anyone his name because he doesn't speak English or words. But that is his name. And it's also not Jenna Cash. That wasn't his name either. We all know it was Dave Kelly. But you had to know that intuitively. Or ask Rachel Hollis because she talks to all the animals. Not Jenna's cat, not Jenna Cash. <laughs> Once again, that was not the name. Just wanted to make that clear. <laughs> the moose ran away. It didn't hurt anybody. Thanks, Dave Kelly, for being peaceful. El Cholo's kid was driving by the scene when the moose was running away and said, Mommy, that's a moose. And she said, Shh, you're crazy. And she said, you're crazy. Because she was trying to smoke a fat J. Because her name was actually Blaze Goddess. Hey, Blaze Goddess. And she wasn't driving though. Actually, she stopped because she's a safe parental driver. And they were like, man, we've been driving a long time. I think we took a wrong turn in Asheville because we were supposed to end up in Charlotte. And somehow we're in Alaska. I think we better ask her for some directions, am I right? <laughs> hmm. And that, my friends, is the Pancake Breakfast Club story of medical medium Part three. <laughs> Kitty, it's time to go. Say goodbye. <laughs> See you guys later. Peace.